Hello there and welcome to week eight of the beginner boost. We got a lot of cover today. We're gonna hopefully get through Vim. Basic usage of Vim. And we'll have a little conversation about that before we get going. So let's let's jump right in. We will be taking one small break in between, but we're otherwise we're gonna zoom through two hours. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just know that you know you can fast forward and watch it at two two times speed. I mean, you know all of this, right? Um, okay, so last week we learned Ed, and we need to take a break before we learn VI and talk about editors in general. And I sort of got talking about this last week. If you were in the live session last week, you'll know that we ended with quite a rant about this that didn't make it into the YouTube video. If you're wondering why the YouTube video ended so abruptly, it's because I chopped it all off. Because the conversation, despite my warnings to myself and others about it, about terminal editors uh, in Unix is really, um, I suppose, heated is the, the word to use. Okay, so let's start before we get into the editors. Let's actually answer a question that came from a user um, last week that is very relevant. Uh, somebody who was who's in our chat. The question is 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 very simple. Why do I need to learn a terminal editor? And the answer is equally simple, because you, if you're using an e a terminal, you need to edit files. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's really it. And so. The question about whether you should use Ed or VI or Vim or Nano or Emacs or, you know, all, any of these terminal editors, it's like, why should I learn a terminal editor at all? And the, the, again, the answer is, why should you use a terminal at all? And this conversation, this question kind of came up, particularly when we start to talk with, um, with, with people from, from, from the from the group who have not uh, been using a terminal but have been successfully editing software for a very long time, right? Or they are getting into software development and stuff. And by the way, we are in software and game development today. I'm just checking my category here just to check. Uh, strictly speaking, today's topic is more of a science and technology topic, but that is 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 okay. So so. That's the answer. The answer, the answer is we're using a terminal editor because we're using a terminal. <laughs> okay. And I, I just want to put it out there that there are many cases where you don't need a terminal editor. And there are many cases where you need a terminal editor uh, really quickly. And you might be even VS Code. But the, the one year that I obsessed about VS Code, and I actually started telling everybody you should use VS Code instead of Vim. And I had one of the people that I'd mentored for several years who's off doing amazing things now uh tell me are you crazy and like why are you talking about this and it's like it takes forever to stick to boot up vs code just to edit one little file so the answer more precisely is that if you're you if you're editing at vs code virtual server code if you don't know about virtual server code and you're new to this let me at least mention this okay the re most of the virt visual studio code which i think is just code what is it it's not Visual Studio. It's um, was it Code dot whatever? Visual Studio Code. I can't remember the URL. It was it's Code dot Visual Studio. So this this is by far the most prominent editor for software in all of the industry right now. And you're it's it's worth learning it. Obviously, we're not going to learn it here. Um, it's worth playing with it and learning it and particularly if you're an educator and you want to help people, young people get started right away and you don't want to necessarily teach them the terminal. So for example, I used to have Visual Studio. Um, we would, I, I used to, at a private school, I used to teach uh, game development and we, everybody installed VS Code and they would install a local preview web server and then they could run their Phaser JS games um, from their local laptops and they could share them and stuff like that. And then if they, they didn't have to necessarily learn how to post or anything like that. So if you're working with young people, see this little thing down here where it says master. So 
VS Code also takes care of Git and GitHub uh, rather easily. So if you have an account, it just prompts you for everything. And a lot of people would say that this, that if you're doing any software development, you should do it in VS Code, right? And I've you open up open up YouTube or Twitch or anything. Ninety nine percent of the time, the people that are doing their editing of anything that's software related, whether it be C, Ruby, Rust, Python, whatever, they're even, yeah, I've never seen any Perl yet, that'd be interesting. They're usually writing it in VS Code. Uh, one one beginner that I helped get a job, starting a salary job of over 100,000, he, had, in his interview, the guy apologized for using VS Code, sort of, because he used Vim and Tmux. Uh, and because people, people that use VS Code who see people who are really good with a terminal editor, they sort of, you know, feel like, I don't know, Trish and Jessica Jones, you know, they don't have powers and so they want them. And, uh, so anyway, I, I just wanted to put that out. That's all we're going to say about VS Code, right? There's nothing wrong with VS Code. There, there's a ton of graphic editors, right? And. I have to mention them because that way it being, you know, the boost is about helping you be informed, right? So instead of people say, why are you wasting your time suffering through Vim when you could just pop up VS Code and start writing code, right? Well, you're going to have to use a terminal at some point, right? Because you're going to have to compile the code. Uh, you're you're going to have to do things that relate to the, I mean, already like move files around and stuff like that. Uh, you can certainly do all those things by dragging, dropping, and doing all their graphic widgets tools. And this VS Code is actually really good for shared development. Like if you want two or three people all coding at the same time, which you usually don't want, by the way. You would only want that for a peer review or something like that. Most collaborative development would take place as a form of a GitHub PR. And then you would have a thread and you would make changes and then somebody else would make changes. And that's usually that's how collaboration happens. It's not real time. But in the you know rare case that you are doing code review and you're doing a real time development session, uh, something like VS Code is nice. Um, I think I mentioned this last week, but we I actually met with the VS Code team. They're really great um, at Microsoft. Uh, we had several phone calls with them uh, while they were in development. They probably in 20, 2019, I want to say. And uh, so it's a, it's a great team. It's a good tool. Uh, their interactive thing, by the way, works uses uh, Secure Shell tunnels, which we're going to learn Secure Shell later. So, you know, it's it's worth learning it. But I'm just 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 to put it out there. But we're not going to spend the time on that today. We're we're going to focus on the terminal. There's a there's a use for everything, right? Uh, there's also if you're going to do Go development, there's GoLand. Uh, if you're going to do Python development, there's PyCharm. Uh, there's, you know, JetBrains, there's, there's, there's for Android development and for all kinds of development. You know, there's different, there's Swift developer things. There's old school Java Eclipse stuff. So, and then there's the ancient, ancient, really big and bloated Visual Studio, which is the traditional Windows C++ development platform or, or, or .NET or whatever, uh, C Sharp is like that. So knowing the lay of the land with regard to big, big you know, code editors, VS Code, you know, is a lighter weight editor. That's why it got really famous. In fact, VS Code actually started, it's the idea of VS Code started with another editor called Sublime Text, which started the whole thing of these lightweight editors and then Sublime Text. And then, and then there was, you know, bracket, there was a bunch of them that were all clones of each other. There was Atom, there was Brackets and, and VS Code and VS Code kind of won that was Microsoft's uh, variation on, on, on this lightweight editor idea. And so, should you have a lightweight editor? Should you know about a lightweight graphic editor? Yes, you should. Is it included in the boost? No, it's not, because the boost is about getting you good with the terminal and Linux, right, primarily. So, the reason that you would pick a graphic editor is gonna come in later, because it's also largely, in my opinion, the same reason that you would use Emacs, okay? So, and that's the, probably the heaviest of the terminal editors out there. The heavier the editor, the more capable it is of dealing with large code bases, right? And, but when it comes to editing text, uh, there are lots of reasons to edit text. And frankly, most of the reasons for editing text on a Linux terminal are not writing software. No, they're they're changing configuration data, they're you know settings. They are you know working with the command line to build ad hoc scripts uh, to manipulate the system. 
in some way, whether you're hacking it or you're operating it, you're maintaining it. Um, they are, you know, writing for me, it's, you know, baseline writing. If you're writing Markdown and you want to write documentation like I'm doing right now, somebody in the chat asked why there's all ones here. That's because it's Markdown. Markdown makes those all into one, two, three, four, and that makes it so I can change the order. I cover that on the first day. So that's the answer for that. So, so should you learn a terminal editor? And yes, the answer is yes, but you should also probably learn a graphic editor, particularly if your path is going to be software developer. All right. Um, when we talked about the beginning jobs on the first or second day, I think it was, we went through the, the jobs that the boost is designed and prepared for you to, to look at. And just as a reminder, you can go look at all of this at skillstack.io and click on beginner boost. Oops, kind of DNS problem. Beginner boost, right? So if you click on this and you click on the boost overview, uh, this gives you all of this, right? But if you click, oh, sorry, welcome to the beginner boost. It'll tell you what the jobs are for, right? So here's just a, a series of those jobs. You can look at those. But if you, as you see, all of these jobs, uh, all of only one of these jobs is actually doing software development all the time, right? The only job in this list that could be done without the terminal is this one, right? It really is. The, all of the other ones are going to need a terminal at some point. It just so happens that software developer uh, is going to benefit the most from a terminal. Uh, I'm sorry, they're going to benefit kind of secondarily from having a terminal. But there are many, many successfully professionally employed software developers who do not know the terminal. In fact, if you if you go out there, you'll you'll see people that will talk about learning the terminal as uh, finally learning the terminal or learn the terminal is to take your software development skills to the next level. Right. So these are people who the, 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 there's a baseline assumption out there in the software development world that you don't need a terminal, that it's some extra skill that's going to take you up a notch. I happen to disagree. I, I think that if you want to be a, a truly good software developer, and that means you need to be able to code in pretty much any language. And there are several languages that the default for development is the terminal. And that includes development in C, uh, particularly for systems development. Um, there, there are a lot of languages that lend themselves more to developing from the command line than from VS Code or something like that. And and so, you know, knowing how to do that, if you're doing any, we're going to be doing a lot of bash scripting, which is development, software development. That's, that's a part of, uh, like I just, you know, we just did GitHub actions just recently. And that's another, another way to, you know, to, to do that. Those, those things, they like shell scripting and stuff like that, that, that benefits from doing it from the terminal, because otherwise you'd have a graphic, you'd have to have a graphic window open and you'd have to write it with a graphic window and then you'd have to run it from the command line. Right. Uh, in fact, most software has to be run from the command line, especially if you're writing command line applications. So, so I'm just going to go for it and say, uh, uh, yeah, we have one comment here that says I work for a computer science department university. And I can say 85% of the students use VS code and they stay SSH into our cluster for months on end. So, so that, that is that is what people do in fact one of the I, it's, it's worth mentioning one last one last thing about this so people have become so dependent and in love with vs code that vs code uses a technology for remote connection called secure shell which has been around forever which is designed to give you a terminal to something right in fact let me show you just as a, as just as a demonstration if i just ssh into my home machine uh, i've just made a remote connection to a new machine and now i can use the terminal over there right and you will be learning how to do that. We're going to practice doing that, uh, just not today. So, so we're going to. So let's. That's the end of that. But the, I wanted to say that reminded me. The comment reminded me that there, there. Every time we talk about remote, co you know, code editing, that the the the, the 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 VS Code capability of using SSH to connect into a remote system and do the editing comes up. And I just want to point out this comment that says that those students who use it, who use VS Code to log into a remote system to edit their code remotely, end up leaving a ton of broken or, you know, lost SSH connections because 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 the, the software just doesn't behave well to do that. 
and and it's it's really not a good idea frankly it's a better idea to do all of the development locally uh, and then to ship it over, right? To SCP it or FTP it or copy it over and then do it that way, in my opinion. But but there are a lot of people who think that running VS Code remotely over SSH is the way to go. We have a couple of people on my team right now, good, capable engineers, that they do that all the time. They do this all the time. They they remotely edit files on the jump boxes using VS Code. And I disagree with that approach completely. I, I think you shouldn't be doing that. I think you should be editing code locally, using Git to, 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 to synchronize things, and, and you know, or just learning how to edit code on the, on the other side. Now, all right, so that's more time than I wanted to spend on that, but, but I think we need to spend this. So let's talk about the different terminal editors really quick. Uh, having got the rant out of my system and chopped it off last week, I'm just going to go right, right into it, okay? So we learned ed. And I, I, we discussed why I think progressive learning is the way to go, right? I believe you should be able to use the least possible amount of technology, depending on what you have. And if you look at the list of te uh, if you look at the list of jobs here, uh, you will see that almost all of these jobs uh, are going to have some exposure uh, to containers. And and we did we did show uh, if we haven't already, I'll show again how. And, you know, there's lots of stuff besides just Linux out there, right? And occasionally you're going to need to learn Ed. And we talked last week about why learning Ed helps you understand said, which is in order to, you know, do things, the stream-based editor, right? So said is a variation of Ed. The commands are the same and stuff. Regular expressions are the same. Substitution is the same. And then you can use that as a part of a pipeline and make your command line even more powerful, right? And you're going to do this a lot of said. Um, so we learned ed and then we learned sed and we did a lot of command line modifications and editing. And now we're going to, we talked at the, at the time about ed being, uh, upgraded at some point in the history of it, of Unix. Ed was the first ever, uh, Unix or Linux editor, uh, created. In fact, I think you could argue that ed was the first editor period, uh, of any editor. Um, because it, you know, it was the first editor. It was deliberately created to to edit Unix systems, uh, and and you know, mostly to write C code, frankly. Um, and then they were like, "Damn, we gotta fix this." So they made X and VI. So X and VI are the same thing, and we talked about that a little bit last week. But I just want to remind you that they are the same thing. So we're gonna when we get into it, we're gonna talk about this more. But X is you know, the, the, the sort of interactive command line-y, it's not a command line, but it's more of a, it doesn't require a full TTY, a full teletype, you know, terminal that's got cells that we talked about earlier. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just type something in and you can pass it to standard input. So X is Ed, right? But then there was like, man, wouldn't it be great if we could see the whole, you know, document at once and the whole text file at once. And so they added on visual mode of Ed, which are visual mode of X. And so we get VI and, and or V as one person called it. So this is the original editor. And, and I just want to show you that it's worth learning VI as VI. I think we talked about that last week as well. Uh, hey, thanks for the sub. And so you can do this. I mean, you could say, uh, let me, let me go get in here. So I could say podman, uh, podman, let's, let's, let's run. Uh, let's run uh, Alpine, which is a very lightweight containerized thing, right? There's no Vim. There's only VI. Okay. And so when we, we can run VI here, uh, foo or something. Hello. You can see here that it's, it's VI. And you can see that it's very bare bones, very plain. And it doesn't have a lot of stuff that, 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 the next thing in our list has it doesn't have uh it's not improved right so vim is an improvement uh from made it a long time ago uh and you know there were many things that were added to it more things that are worth talking about but more most significantly uh it it was an entire something called vim script which was created uh to really really take vi to the next level and 
you could make the argument that Vim and Emacs kind of came about. Vim was kind of, I, I don't know if this is true, but that Vim kind of came about because people wanted a more powerful VI style editor. Uh, because if you compare Emacs, I mean, to, strictly speaking, Emacs kind of goes right here, right? In terms of like, when did it come out? If we're going to go that way, let's do that, right? So, um, so, so Emacs is a very hefty editor. We are not going to learn it. We've talked about, we talked about this last, last week. I, if somebody who actually really knows Emacs wants to do an hour long boost session, um, I would be happy to even pay them. Um, I don't use Emacs. Emacs is a very valid editor to use though, but Emacs and Vim kind of, Kind of so Emacs came out because VI was way way too limited for Richard Stallman and the gang who made the GNU part of GNU Linux. Uh, don't call it that, by the way. GNU Linux is an insult to everybody who participated in Linux besides the GNU team and the Linux team. And there are many many thousands of people that are disrespected by calling it GNU Linux. Linux is the appropriate word to use when referring to Linux. People who call it GNU Linux are just being disrespectful, uh, if not ignorant. So don't be that person. Just call it Linux and call it a day. Yeah, we know that it only represents, it sounds like it's just one thing, but that is the best way to honor the contributions of all people involved instead of just answering Richard Stallman's really loud objection to to, to, to Linus Torvalds getting all the credit for it, even though. So Tor, we won't get into the Linux history, but when you use LS and when you use PWD, those commands were created by the GNU team, not by... Rich, by by Linus Torvalds who made Linux. Linux is, and we, we want, this is a teeny tiny history lesson, but Linux is, Torvalds focused on making the kernel the main part of the operating system. And and the GNU team made a whole bunch of stuff, all the user land stuff that we use, LS, PAWD, uh, PS, command, all those commands. And those commands, thousands and thousands of lines of Unix code that had to be rewritten so that it could be used freely. And that's Richard Solomon's big thing, uh, free software. So, and that is a that was a lot of code to write. So anytime you're writing a lot of code, Emacs is the thing to go to. It really is. Uh, Linus Torvalds uses a, a small version of it. All the developers, uh, most of the developers for the Linux kernel team, are using Emacs. Most developers for the for for you know systems development, uh, the large chunk of the academic community uses Emacs. Uh, it, you know, there are a bunch of YouTubers who argue about Emacs versus Vim. Most of them don't have jobs doing it. They just want to be loud and opinionated. Um, but if you want to, if you want to make an educated decision about which editor you should use, you should consider looking at the people that you want to be, you want to emulate. And if you want to be a Linux kernel developer, probably, probably want to learn Emacs, right? Because there's thousands of lines of code to deal with. And you're going to be you're going to be totally fine to install Emacs uh, and start you know using it. Uh, and but if you are going to be a hacker, a systems operator, or a platform engineer, or a Kubernetes develop you know administrator, you're going to want to learn VI and Vim because you're going to need to be able to edit on any system anywhere very quickly and use the installed editor. So the biggest difference here between uh, between the VI, Vim, and Emacs is that VI or Vim is going to be on the system by default. The only time that VI and Vim are not on a system is if you're on a teeny itsy bitsy tiny container. I mean, even BusyBox has it, right? Which is the smallest of containers, but I did notice that uh, I think Ubuntu server took out all editors. There's no editor at all because they wanted to save on space or something. And they figured, hey, if you're gonna do an editor, it's because containers are not largely for editing software right but then occasionally when you're in a container you might want to you know tweak something and you can't tweak anything i mean you know how to tweak things right now using just you know sed and and dealing with files and do direct editing if you were in a bind but but it's still very common to find vi and vim uh, on a system and i personally think that even if you do decide to become an emacs person i actually had um a professor tell me this. I can't remember what department they were in, but they said that their 
that for larger sessions and everything, they use Emacs, but they also use VI because they're re regularly on other tiny systems. So they've learned both VI and Emacs. So my personal opinion is, and this let's actually change these to be the order that you should probably learn them, okay? I think this should 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 be probably, you know, the order that you learn things. Okay. So if you if you want to learn those other things, go for it, right? So uh while we're before we leave the the the, the topic of Vim and we're gonna get to we're gonna learn Vim today. We're gonna go through the entire Vim tutorial today, uh before we're done. Come hell or high water, we're gonna finish the Vim tutorial. So by the end of the day today, you should be able to replay the video and know exactly how to get started learning Vim and have the courage to just go for it, which I had to do way back in the day like everybody else. Um, so, but before we leave the topic of Vim, I, I didn't list them all here, but there are probably, I, I wanna say there's like five different versions of Vim. And one of them is NeoVim. Uh, I'm just going to say I don't like NeoVim. I don't understand why it exists. I, I don't understand why people use it. There's no reason to use NeoVim at all. A anytime somebody suggests that you use NeoVim, ask them why not use just, j just use Vim. And see, hear, hear them flounder around and try to find a response. There are lots of reasons not to use NeoVim. The most important one being that, that its configuration files are completely incompatible, so therefore you're now maintaining two config, one configuration file for NeoVim and one for Vim. And another number two, NeoVim isn't installed by default, so if you're going to install something, you might as well install Emacs and use that, right? So I, I am, I'm not anti-NeoVim, I just don't understand why people use it. To me, there's absolutely zero reason to use it. And I, to the, to date, I've never had anybody justify it. So, uh, so VI and Vim, there is one, it's worth mentioning that there's one other one. It's actually called NVI. And, uh, what, what is NVI? So NVI is a error for error, bug for bug compatible version of the original VI on Unix. It's also the VI that you're going to get if you use BSD Unix. And you should consider learning BSD Unix eventually. This is kind of Linux centric, but we've tried to make you know we've tried to make this boost very Unix centric above everything else. BSD Unix and the many variations of Unix that that aren't free, uh, free BSD, they are very capable, very important editors. Darwin is, an, is a descendant of BSD Unix as well. These Unix systems are very substantial. And they come with things that are BSD-like, and you need to, to learn them. So don't just think that this whole world is Linux, right? It's Unix and Linux. And some people will put a star there, and they'll put star Nix, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, you know, or the Linux, I, it's, it's hard to... Bottom line, NVI, not to be confused with NVim. NVim is how you start NeoVim. NVI is, is VI, right? So I'm going to put NVI here. All right. So, so, so Vim, I guess we could put NeoVim here if you wanted NVim, but I, I don't want NVim. Look, if you want to use NVim because you find a reason to use it, that's fine. Go for it. Just don't tell me because I think it's silly. And don't tell me to use NeoVim and don't give me crap about not using NeoVim, which, which has been the source of drama in my life in the past. And I don't, I'm done with that drama. I don't need to be. I don't need people to look down on me for not using the for using the default Linux editor on millions of systems. <laughs> okay, that's all I want to say about that. Uh, I I would rather use Emacs than NeoVim any day. It's worth mentioning though, Nano Pico and Joe. So back in the day when this is not the current situation, it might be for you. So universities tend to have huge multi-user Unix systems. And that's how it used to be. Rather than scaling laterally with containers, right? It used to be that you scaled vertically with these big, 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 big multi-user systems, sometimes with 13,000 users on a single system. That's how it used to be, right? And there's still some of that. You can still get an account on Carnegie Mellon if you want to do Pico CTF over there for hackers. And you can see there's sometimes there's 30,000 users on one machine. And, uh, Back in that in that day, uh, 
a, a very common editor came came about that that was designed to make it really easy to just to what in their opinion to make it easy to edit files uh by just intuitively right so i'm using my arrows to move around and and then i mean i can figure everything out by just looking at the screen and everything uses control commands Right now, I happen to hate control commands. I may have talked about this last week. I don't like control commands because why? Because you get, you get, you know, you're like, okay, how do I exit? Well, you know, he says, okay, caret X. So that means control X. Uh, save the buffer. No. So uh, while I don't have any like philosophical disagreement for using nano, which someplace along the line has been decided to be the standard beginner editor. Uh, I still think you can, I, I'm going to prove it today. We're going to, I'm going to show you that if you go slowly, you can learn VI just as easily, if not easier than Nano, Pico, and Joe. They're all a variation on the same sort of, you know, com control commands editors. Uh, I strongly advise against learning this, particularly if you're helping other beginners. I, and I've talked to us before, but I have seen Nano ruin the muscle memory of people so that when they do other things in Unix and Linux from the command line, they make mistakes. Like they think that exiting is going to be control X, which does something completely differently uh, from the command line. So you'll have beginners who are used to experimenting because uh, you want them to experiment and f you know fail faster so they can learn you'll find that that the the things that they they, they learn from nano joe and pico are wrong when they try to experiment to use those same things on the command line and i personally have witnessed people freeze their terminal and do all kinds of things because they just wanted to do the right thing and so they guessed based on what they had learned from nano and it was after that that we stopped doing nano and I, I put my head down and said, okay, how can we make uh, VI the easiest possible editor to learn? Okay, uh, which terminal editor should I use? Uh, I think I already covered this. I think that every, your daily editor should be Vim, personally. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and let's go ahead and, and spend some time actually learning it. Uh, I think your daily editor should be Vim. I really do. It's the editor that's the most common out there. It's the standard Unix editor, Linux editor everywhere except for Kali Linux, Alpine, and I think, uh, what was the other one that they changed the default editor? Uh, Arch. Arch is, no, I think, no, and BSD Unix is, is, is VI, right? I also think that when you learn uh, NeoVim, I'm sorry, not NeoVim, when you learn uh, Vim, that you should as much as possible, avoid Vim isms and know the alternative to Vim isms. That's why we learned Ed and X, so that when you go into it, you can you can be productive. Okay, let's actually get into it. Let's actually start learning VI now. Um, <clears throat> all right, so um, you you know you have your terminal up, right? You remember how to start your terminal? If you don't, go watch the overview video to get yourself a Linux terminal. Now you're going to start up a terminal that's already been pre-configured with a bunch of Vim preferences that are particularly common and useful for beginners. Uh, many of you are gonna wanna have more control over the VimRC file, which we will start to do maybe next week. I don't know if we will do it next week, possibly though. Um, the reason we're learning the editor now instead of Tmux and 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 more bash and stuff like that is because we, we can't change any configuration files or anything until we know how to edit files. So, so this is really the thing to learn. And um, I have I have an old I have an old page out there that hasn't been moved over yet that I want to show you really quick. And this is eventually going to get moved. But if you go to rbx.gg slash, uh, I think it's is it slash vim or vi? I can't remember. I think it might be just vi. All right, so this isn't, I'm going to copy this over, okay? So, but for right now, you can go ahead and look at it. So it's rdbx.gg slash vi, and that'll redirect you. But, so, um, here is a summary of everything we just talked about. Uh, 1976, that's when it was made. Um, and what I want to 
show you is so here here are the resources that I recommend you use to learn VI. We're not going to be able to learn all of VI today, but I want you to go look at some of these resources that are over there, right? I also wanted to warn you about Vim Adventures. So Vim Adventures looks like, you can go look at it. I'm not going to even open it. Vim Adventures looks like a fun place to go to learn it. It's actually horrible. And I paid for it. I paid for an entire membership for my entire school for two years. And the only thing that anyone learned out of that was how to get really good at playing the Vim Adventures game. When they went to go edit files, their, their memory was not was disassociated with, from editing files. So here's the takeaway. The best way to learn a thing is to do that thing. So the best way to learn Vim is to use Vim to edit files. Right. So if you you can use the Vim Tutor to learn it originally, and then you could you should probably start writing your notes in Vim. So one of the first things we're going to learn over the next couple of weeks is going to be how to take those notes you've been taking. Right. How to take those notes instead of doing them in a graphic GitHub window. Hopefully you're taking notes now. And, you know, instead of doing it in a graphic GitHub window, we're going to move toward taking those notes uh, on the command line. And then you're going to practice writing. If you want to, if you want to start a blog, right? Which we may cover that too. How to start a Zettelkasten? Um, you should be editing files. You know, writing files, editing, writing bash scripts, all of that stuff. That's the best way to learn it is to actually use it, right? Uh, it's not to you know use Vim Adventure. So uh, open Open Vim is kind of nice. Vim Genius is kind of nice as a tutorial. Uh, we're not going to open that up right now. We're just going to do the Vim Tutor today, and I am going to give you my my additions to the Vim Tutor. But but one last thing I wanted to show you was um, so where is it? Basic Basic Vim. Uh, I think it was called. I think it's called. Um, is it Vim Basic? I can't remember. I can't remember where I put it. I'm going to have to go find it. Um, but there is a... So there's really not that many commands that you need to learn, right? Um, I think... that I call it Easy Vim? Is it Easy Vim or Basic Vim? There's also a Vim tutorial and there's a Vim cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I put it. I can't remember. I'll go find it later. This is really old code. It needs to move over. Uh, you know, add it to the list. Let's see. Editors, Vim. Oh, Vim improved. Okay. Here we go. So, yeah, this is the one. All right. So, it's tools, editors, Vim. All right. So, Vim improved. Vim is the best modern editor. Uh, rival Emacs, Ubiquity VI, muscle memory. What about NeoVim? Use TMX and Pains. What about graphic Vim? What, what about Emacs? This this all needs to come into my other book, but for right now, you can just know that this is here. Uh, you may not have Vim installed otherwise, you, but we you do have Vim, so you don't have to do that. We're going to edit Vim to edit our configuration files. Plugins learning. The best way to learn Vim is to use it. There's no surprise. Uh, you know how to use shell integration and magic wands. Um, and I'm trying to find the link to the... I have a I have a summary someplace of the easiest all the commands that you really need to know for Vim. And I I don't have it in front of me right now. So we're gonna go ahead and just dive right in and I'll see if I can remember. Um so here's 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 the deal. All right. So I I'm kind of having a a moment here because I'm trying to decide whether to jump right into the tutorial or to teach you a simplified version of the tutorial. I think I'm, I used to teach kids as young as nine. I, in fact, I had a bounty out for $200. It went for 10 years unclaimed. Uh, if anybody could find any organization on planet Earth that was teaching nine-year-olds how to use VI, because I was <laughs> for a long time. I'm going to brag about that. So, And to do that, you have to actually really uh, focus on, on what it is. So, so let's do that, right? So let's go ahead and start VI. Now you can obviously start like Ed, you can start VI uh, just right up like this, but then you don't have a file and you can see down in the bottom corner, there's no file down here. You see there's no file name, right? So we're not going to do that. We're going to start VI with a file and let's go ahead and just start tempfoo, which is, you know, just a random file name that I use all the time. <coughs> Slash temp is where you put things if you want them to go away. 
Uh, it will be cleared out if you reboot, so just know that. So we're gonna start VI just like we did Ed, and we're gonna start it with a file. And actually there was already something here, so I'm gonna delete that really quick. And right away, you'll see a number of things. So the first thing to note is this stuff up here, this top, ignore that. That stuff is coming from Tmux, right? So everything else is coming from the VI uh, editor, VIM editor. And and I've got my terminals a little bit out of, out of sync here, but that's okay. Um, so, uh, by the way, control, uh, L is, is, will clear and fix your terminal if it gets out of sync. It's a clear and re-raw. So, this down here is the file you're editing. This right here is what type of language it is. This here is the position. Uh, and the reason there's two is because one of them is the, is the rune you're on and the other one is how many bytes in that is. So the reason for that is because things like emojis are actually four bytes long. We don't, if you don't know what a byte is, that's fine. Just know that, uh, that that's what, that's what that is. Um, did I get that right? Or is that, oh no, I, I take it back. That you, you'll only see that here, here. Let me try one. I'm sorry. I, that would have been in parentheses. I told you wrong. Uh, let's say, smile, two emoji, and convert that into an emoji. Nope. What is it? Two emote, two emoji. There it is. There we go. Okay. So you can use emojis and stuff. Go smile. All right. So let's go ahead and do this. No, I think I, I think I updated mine. Sometimes you'll see a parentheses there. Sometimes you'll see a, a, a parentheses and that's the number of bytes. So this really is the, this really is the, the, the byte, I think one, two. So watch it. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven. So yeah, that, that is the byte. That is definitely the byte. That's the byte and not the, um, and not the, the rune or the character so so that's why it jumps so many because this an emoji is actually four bytes long so just know that that's a thing that's what's going on this the, the other one is is a percentage that's how far up and down in the file you are um and stuff um all right so so let's go ahead and and just I'm going to teach you the very basics. So all you need to know for VI are and and people somebody's going to yell at me for this. But I have found that if you start a beginner with knowing about the arrow keys, you can start a beginner with only knowing like three commands, okay? So let me teach you the first command. The first command is or the first thing is how do I open and edit a file? All right, so you do v, vi, or in my case, vi or vim, doesn't matter if you want to type vim, it's fine. I type vi because I know vi. The reason is because when I get on a system that has vi and not vim, it works, right? So I think you should memorize vi and make an alias or whatever you want to do instead of typing vim because vi will be on everything, vim won't. So I think you should use VI. People ask me all the time, why are you using, are you using VI, not Vim? That's why. So, and then the name of the file. So how to open the file for editing. Okay, there we go. Now, let's immediately talk about how to close the file, which is this, the subject of many, many jokes. Uh, there's actually competitions to see how complicated you can make exiting VI, right? It's actually not that hard. And now that you know Ed, you already know that VI is you know, the visual mode of X. So you remember how to quit Ed? Q. Right? So just quit. It's just Q. Right? Now, when we did that, it didn't save anything, right? It didn't save anything. But we already know how to write because we learned Ed. What is the command for writing to a file? Do you remember your Ed command for that? W. Right? So again, by learning ed first we already know the commands to use in vi i don't have to relearn them so w w writes the file you want to do w all the time by the way because that's going to always rewrite it there's no auto writing there's no auto saving 
Uh, so we're writing that file. And then to get out is just Q, right? Now, if you, what happens if you change the file and you, add, you do the colon Q? Whoops, I'm so used to saving. Uh-oh, do you want to save it? There was no write since the last time, right? So you're like, no, I don't really want that. So colon Q exclamation point. That is how you throw away changes, right? So either you would do a colon W there to save it or a colon Q exclamation point. Okay, so there we now have now we, now we know how to open a file and for editing and we know how to exit the file and we know how to save the file. Those are the three hardest things to learn in VI for beginners, unfortunately, because they're not obvious. They're not on the screen. But again, if you've learned ed, you already know those commands, right? Uh, what is the command in ed for inserting something on a line? You guys remember? How do I insert something online? Do you remember the ed command for this? Yeah. Yeah, the VI help on uh, Artifacts Rub is, is the cheat sheet, but it's... Uh, thank you for that. So, so the, the only commands I want you to focus on right now are how to open, how to close, right? And then how to edit, a, how to change a file. So let's, let's talk navigation for a second. All right, now I, you know already that I'm using JKHNL, right? But let's pretend you're a nine-year-old who's never seen Vim, Vim before. What would you do? What would you do to get around? You'd use the arrow keys, right? That's what you would do if you were using Nano. Now you'll notice that I can't go, I can't go up at all if I'm using the arrow keys, unfortunately. So the the next, the third thing to learn is how to switch into insert mode. And you already know this because because Ed, Ed is, is I. So you type I. And you'll see it'll put you down in insert mode down here. Not all, VI doesn't always do that by default, right? This tells you what mode you're in. So in, in VI, you're either in command mode or you're in insert mode, right? Insert mode means you're making changes. Now, this is the part that's very controversial when I tell people this. But... If you know how to go into edit mode by pushing I anywhere, you can now use the arrow keys to go anywhere in the file and change anything you want just the same as you would do if you were in using Nano. So, the first, key, the first thing is how to open a file. The second thing is how to quit. Both, the third thing is how to save, dot W and quit and how to quit without saving, right? And if, I guess the fourth thing is, how do you switch over to insert mode? I, I for insert. And then how do you get around? Just use the arrows. This first round that I'm teaching you here is the absolute simplest way to survive in VI, okay? Get that down first, get that down first. And, and I want you to stop the video and Practice everything we just talked about, right? Because guess what? You don't need to know anything else to use VI. You can use VI with nothing more than that, right? Now, the, the, I, there's one last thing, I suppose, and that is how do I go out from insert mode? I, I want to be able to save now. I can't save. I type a W and it's not saving. Colon W is not saving. How do I go back, Mr. Rob? Escape. Okay, and we're going to learn it properly. So the key for this is escape. And one of the most controversial topics you'll find out in the VI world is all the ways to not use escape. And I'm going to tell you a way that works for all American keyboards that works on every single system everywhere and does not break anything. So... Instead of escape, by the way, is in the top left. And that's quite a way to go with your pinky. Unfortunately, true story, if the escape key in the original computer uh, keyboards was where the caps lock was. This is a true story. You can go look this up. And then the secretaries and everybody decided with electric typewriters and everything that caps lock was more important than escape. So they 
throughout escape oh that's just for those computer nerds and they put it up it banished it up into the top left and they gave they they made caps lock a thing that nobody has ever used except for karens on the internet yelling at people so you know some people will tell you to remap caps lock to escape if you can do that in your keyboard fine it's a lot easier to type it that way. You Seriously, you will get massive debate about how to not use the escape key. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to use the exact equivalent of escape that will work on any keyboard. And that is control left bracket. It's going to take both of your pinkies. It's going to take both of your pinkies. I was shocked to hear a, I think it was a Polish developer, tell me that they deliberately, and they said, and I quote, many of us use American keyboards because we want to use control left bracket instead of escape. I kid you not. I, in fact, I, I was, I was, it was probably three or four years ago when I started streaming that I knew that, that I learned that there are keyboards that don't have a control left bracket equivalent for escape. So, so what I'm trying to say here, so let's practice that. So let's type I, I for insert mode, and I'm moving my arrows around. You don't know about JK, Ellen. We're going to learn that in a sec. Pretend like you don't know that. Pretend like you just know arrows, right? We're moving the arrows around. We're all good to go, yeah. And now we want to go back so we can save and stuff. So we need to change modes back. So how do we do that? You can either just tap escape, or you can type, if you have your hands on the keyboard, you can type control left bracket, right? Now, I personally like control left bracket because even though it's harder to hit, it's two different, I mean, it's, it's two pinkies. It's easier to hit for me because I don't have to go all the way up and hit escape. If you actually want to have a kind of an entertaining chuckle, go find somebody on YouTube who has mastered the use of escape and has put the camera on their keyboard. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's really, really fun. It feels way better than pecking the escape key. Wow. Had no idea. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. And there are people who don't know that who teach you moronic alternatives one of the stupidest alternatives, one way to know somebody who has no idea how to use Vim is if they use control C. Control C sends a system interrupt. Remember that whole thing about not using nano because it puts bad things into your muscle memory? Teaching a terminal user to use control C as a replacement for escape is irresponsible and unprofessional. And there's a lot of big YouTubers who do it. Big, big ass YouTubers who do this. It's actually one of my biggest complaints because, and they don't even know why. So I'm going to tell you why it's a bad alternative right away. I have to shoot this one down. So let's say you're actually using a system that doesn't have control C mapped. Doesn't, it doesn't make up for control C, right? Just learn control left bracket or escape for now. That's all. I, that's all. Look, if you don't want to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you some of the alternatives and why they're so bad. I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. But if you want to skip that right now, so you're not confusing yourself, go for it. You know everything you need to know to edit in VI. Pause the video right now and practice those things. Practice how to open a file. Practice how to save a file. How to close a file. Right? And how to switch back and forth between insert mode and not. And use the arrow keys to move around and edit stuff. For now. For now. For now. If you learn those five or six things... You can use VI in a way more easily than Nano. So master that first. That is survival. In fact, I just remember my URL. I just remember my URL. Survive. There it is. I remembered it. Yay. <laughs> so it's rwx.gg slash VI survive. Right? Now, this says escape here, but I just told you you can use control left bracket, but I I removed that for now, but I should probably put that in there. Use these for up and down, WQ to write, save and quit. Those are the only commands you need. And this is this is a a huge uh, secret, is that if you just learn those things, you don't have to learn anything else. Now, I spent a long time on that. We are going to take a break after that. I want you to, as I said, to take time to do that, okay? Um, but... And there, the reason ZQ and were removed from the survival guide is that too many beginners would experiment with different combinations, haven't gotten how to exit. So there's a lot of people that know VI out there right now, probably a bunch of them in Twitch. 
Uh, if you like hitting escape better, that's fine. Yeah, it's whatever you want to do, right? But I, I just think it's entertaining to watch people who use escape all the time because their pinkies, they, they become kind of like these maestros. Their hand is constantly going like way up to the left. Most of, I actually, most of the people that I've seen who actually use escape, they actually hit escape with their ring, fin ring finger and not with their pinky. Uh, and their, their hand is flying back and forth between that. Uh, I use ZZ all the time. And, and ZQ. These are old school. Uh, and we're, when we go through the tutorial, you're going to see that. And I look, I don't want to confuse anybody. Right now, focus on this. You don't don't pollute your memory with other stuff yet. All right. So as soon as you have mastered this, as I said, pause the video and edit files and practice this until you feel really, really good at that. Okay, because once you do that, the reason that we are focusing on the survival techniques first before we do all the alternatives and the powerful stuff from BI is because we want you to feel safe. It's so important that you feel safe using VI. When I first started VI and I said I am never using Nano again, I was terrified. I was terrified I was going to screw up a configuration file, that I was going to do the wrong thing. Uh, that I was going to get, you know, that I was, you know, there were so many things that I was doing that I could break and I was really scared. The reason that I'm having you, I'm suggesting that you learn the survival skills first is because you can get out of any problem you ever get in by having this down. Any problem you ever get yourself into, you can survive it if you know these However many things, commands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten commands. Okay, so I'm going to take my break now. We're going to pause. You did want me to show you all that other stuff. Uh, and and I, I will do that as soon as I get back from the break. Uh, I'll show you why control C is bad, why ZQ is bad. There's, there's all the alternatives. If you want to, I can throw under the bus all the alternatives to escape. Except for control left bracket. Uh, they all have really major, major disadvantages, especially control C. All right, I'll take a quick break. Here's some music. All right, I'm back from my little break. And yeah, I'm starting to drink beer again. <laughs> Hi. Cheers to everybody in the booth. Cheers for learning VI. Hey, I want you all to give yourself a pat on the back. You have learned VI. That is not an exaggeration. That is not hyperbole. If you have learned how to open a file, edit that file, and write that file and leave it, you know VI. You know, you know VI. You now know VI. You know it. Okay? So let, let me show you an example of, of where this would case. There is, there is actually one reason to learn a little bit more, and we're going to do that now. So... Here I am. You'll remember over here, I'm not using. I'm using uh, VI on. I'm using VI on. Um, what do I want to say? On uh, on Alpine. So this is not Vim. This is VI, right? So all of those same rules that I just told you apply. Okay. So this this is an unconfigured VI. There's no customization whatsoever in this thing, right? The tildes are empty lines. So you now know how to do this. As I said, you know VI. So, give, you know, you earn the gold star for VI. Everything after that, after this, is an advanced additional step for VI, which is very much the Unix way, right? You learn the basics first, and then you layer on additional knowledge as needed to make yourself more efficient and better. So, so we're going to type I, all right? You see down here, look what changed. It changed to I, so it's a little bit different, right? It's still VI, though. So everything you learn is going to work. So you could say, blah, 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 put some stuff in here. Yeah. Look at this. I can use my arrow keys to move around. Oh my God. Right. And I didn't have to. Now that's kind of tedious. Right. And we're going to, the whole point of VI with the secret is that it, VI was made so your hand can stay on the keyboard. You don't even have to use your mouse. And when you, when you, the better you get at VI, the more time you spend in command mode and the less time you spend in insert mode. So as an absolute beginner, you're spending your entire time in insert mode, moving around and changing stuff. And then you escape insert mode once, right? <laughs> and then, and then what? And then you write it out, you save it, right? 
So that's because you're an absolute beginner. So beginners spend almost all of their time in insert mode, just like you would with Nano or Pico or Joe or something, right? But um, as you get good, you're going to spend more and more and more time in command mode. In fact, you can tell how good a veteran VIVM user is by how much time, if you just watch them, if you watch streamers, you watch how much time the the little insert icon is on or the little insert indicator is on. The better they are, the less time they have insert on. Unless they're like writing prose or something, right? You know, uh, like a, a blog or something like that. In which case it makes a lot of sense, right? So, and you'll see that like my standard is I, I write something and then I go right back. I'm doing a control up bracket, okay? So again, I just want to show you that you know VI. I don't know how many times I have to say that. Do I have to say it again? I'm going to say it again. You can now go from this moment on. Today is your VI birthday. Write this day in the calendar. Put it in your notes. Give yourself a gold star. Make yourself a, give yourself a Vim sticker. And from this day on, commit to yourself that the only thing you're going to edit, you're going to use for editing terminal code is VI. Period. You're going to use VI to edit everything from now on. Because why? Because you are a VI user. You're, you're not a power user yet. You're going to be a power user. You're going to be. I, I, I'm, I'm hitting that. Uh, it looks like Vim, but actually it's VI. Exactly. Because it's not Vim. It's VI. This is why you learn VI and not Vim. Right? You learn VI because it's everywhere. Vim is not. Do I have to say, How many times do I have to say that? Hmm. Uh, VI does drive people to drink, though. I won't lie. There are a lot of great uh, XKCD jokes and, and comics about VI. Culturally, um, it's really important that you know that those exist, right? So one of the biggest memes, and it's not really a meme, but one of the biggest memes in the VI world is all the, is making jokes about how to exit VI. It's like, oh, I, yeah, I learned VI like five years, like in 1974, and I still haven't figured out how to exit. That's stupid. It's stupid. It's easy to exit. How do you exit? Colon Q exclamation point if you don't want to save anything. Boom. You're going to do that a lot, by the way. There's going to be a lot of colon Q exclamation point going on. Uh, okay. So I need to the beginners out there. I want you to just stop listening for about one or two minutes. Okay. To any of the veterans that are out there that are telling me, Oh my God, why aren't you teaching this and this and this and this and this variation, which I don't even want to say. The reason is because the things that we just learned to do VI survival are based on things that we have already learned with Ed. All right. So the colon, as you guys have seen already, you can probably guess when you put the colon in front of something, that means that this is a command, an X command. Anytime you use a colon, you're not even really using VI anymore. You're using X which is improved ed remember so anytime you see a colon i want you to remember the time you spent learning ed because the commands that come after that are x commands they're x commands they're 100 percent x commands this is an x command this is an x command so strictly speaking even though this says it's the basics of vi the only vi on this page is i escape and these arrows this is x you already learned that Right? This is X. This is also why you should learn the X commands because they are the most powerful. Wait till we get into it. Right? And you can still learn all that other stuff. All right. So, so again, I'm going to say it again. I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. Pause the video and master that. Before you proceed beyond this, master this. Promise me. Promise me that you will not go beyond this and tell them because you're going to get frustrated and then you'll get mad. You're going to say, Mr. Rob, oh my God, Vim sucks. I hate it. It's so hard. I'm going to use just VS Code, VS Code or Nano. <laughs> okay. So just stop and, and, and be patient and use it. Okay. Uh, restart your computer to get, <laughs> to get out of him. I may have closed the terminal to get out of him before. I may, that may, I'm just going to admit it. I, I, I may have dropped a terminal out just because I forgot or it got stuck or something. The key combos may be more hard. Just use, yeah, just, or just use Adam, Adam or VS Code. Yes. Uh, the media keys over actual key function. Yeah. So, so there you go. All right. All right. Now, I'm, I'm kind of scared because we're now going to enter new territory for the rest of the day today, another 40, 50 minutes. 
we're going to learn all of VI. Now, we're going to go through the VI tutorial together. This is going to be, I'm going to go through it rather quickly, and I'm going to talk about it a lot, and I'm, we're going to talk about why I think the VimTutor program is really broken. Uh, and and we're going to, we're, but we're going to go through it, okay? And, but this week, your homework is to start using VI and remember the survival mode beyond anything else. Everything in addition to that is a bonus, okay? So, so the first thing, so if you've got your terminal up, which you should have, if you've got your terminal open, right, your terminal won't look like mine. Should I, should I open a proper terminal so I look like you? I guess I can do that. Why don't I do that? Why don't I do podman uh, start dash a, was it boost? Where did I put, where did I put my boost container? Yeah, it's over here somewhere. All right, let me start up a boost container. You should you should know how to do this already. I mean, we do this all the time, but I'm going to start up an actual boost container so I look just like you. Podman start dash a boost. Now yours, okay. So here I look like just like you, right? So, um, and there's no files in here. We learned all those commands already. So these are all those configuration files that we're going to edit eventually, but we don't have to do that. So let's let's go through and practice by following the number one way to learn Vim. I told you the number one way is to edit files. Well, the Vim Tutor actually does that. And the reason that I suggest Vim Tutor, despite its brokenness over other things, is because Vim Tutor, which I'm actually, I've been working for years making a better version of Vim Tutor, but you'd have to be installed. And it's not on my cluster. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here later. But um, Vim Tutor actually has you edit files. Uh, so but it it teaches you a lot of stuff that that you don't need as a beginner and I, i'm just going to jump in is everybody ready are everybody ready okay let's do it so to learn vim type vim tutor okay and type vim tutor enter welcome to the vim tutor and you can just read it and then you remember all that because you know vi survive you learned vi survival before you open vim tutor so you already know that you can move around in here, right? And you can do your document, you know, your stuff. And you can see down here, it's a little bit different than mine. It's a little, the, 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 the thing is a little bit different than mine. That's fine. And you can read this. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna zip through this, okay? I am not gonna read the whole thing to you. Uh, as we start the Vim Tutor, I wanna tell you some important things about it. The most important thing you need to know about the Vim Tutor is that it was created by a bunch of newbie college kids from Colorado who had been using VI maybe one semester. And they submitted to Brom, the guy who made Vim, they submitted to Brom this tutor, and Brom said, yeah, sure, let's put it in. Since then, Brom has had a multiple requests to improve the Vim Tutor program, to correct it, because it's wrong in several places, I'm gonna show you, and to make it better and he's denied every one of them and every time it's always the same answer it's good enough for now and i in fact one of the reasons that neovim exists this is a little bit of you know pop culture drama in the vim world one of the reasons that neovim exists is because the guy who made vim is so uptight He's a wonderful guy he's really talented but he's so uptight he does not want to hear any suggestions or anything like that and I, I personally believe that the primary reason that NeoVim exists is because some substantial changes to Vim needed to be made and the people were pushing for it really hard and he kept saying, no, no, no. And they said, fine, we'll make our own. So they built a beta version of Vim, which is still beta, by the way. NeoVim is still beta. It's not, it's not production software. Uh, they built a version of Vim that they had control over and they put all their things that they wanted into it. And then... Brahm was like, fine. And so he came back around and he put those things into the Vim that that people were using NeoVim for. And I don't want to get into the details, but that's largely the reason that they did that. So that attitude about, oh, I'm not going to put it in there, uh, was defeated by, oh yeah, fork you. And this is the great thing about open source. If you don't like what somebody's doing, don't get mad, get busy and tell them to fork <laughs> or fork them. 
Yeah, you can just fork them. You can fork them and you can go make your own thing and go about your business. You don't have to be mad. You can just make a better thing and go on. So that's a little bit of the pop culture there. So moving the cursor, you already know this. Um, so you already know about how to move, but let's pretend that you don't want it. This does not work, by the way, if you're using a Dvorak keyboard. So I was once having some typing competition with, you have to know how to type. If you don't know how to touch type, forget it, right? Seriously, seriously, if you don't know how to touch type, stop the video right now and go to any number of typing sites and get good with actually touch typing. Because the entire purpose of Vim and the terminal depends heavily on touch typing. If you're hunting and pecking and stuff like that, I've seen one kid actually, he was really good with his left hand because he was doing W, A, S, and D to play games and stuff. But, but, his, but his right hand, he was like finger pecking. It was the craziest thing ever. But if you are not like a 30 words per minute touch typist, uh, or you know you, don't, you can you can look at the keys, but you need to know where the whole point of them is using the keyboard as God intended, whoever the Cordy God is. And if you have Dwarak, it's not going to work, right? So, and I've had to you know I've told you I taught VI to nine year olds. Well, they could barely type most of them. So we spent a lot of time in typing tutor and 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 uh, what's the what's the the race? I have a, a lifetime membership to the race one. What is that? God, I can't remember it now. It's the one where you, Nitro type, where you can like race with each other on typing, right? Uh, typing speed, by the way, is not a primary factor of software development. If you see a Twitch streamer who's typing really fast and moving really fast, there's a good chance that they're not good because most software development is not about typing really fast. It's about typing intelligently. It's about making a choice. It's about saying, you know, pausing and thinking and only typing. If you ever watch an artist, the same thing. Artists are not just throwing paint all the time. Usually they're thinking about what they want to do and then they do it or they they're feeling it out as they go. And that's another way to do it. But, but people who brag about you know, speed finishing things or typing, you know, certain things as fast as possible or coding this thing faster than this other thing. Those things are the opposite of good programming. Good programming is methodical and sometimes slow. And, I mean, you still need to be able to type things, but relatively quickly, particularly if you're a writer. If you're a writer, that's the other thing, right? If you're if you're a writer, then yeah, you should be able to write fast. Okay, so so I just had to put those things out there. Uh, you're right, 10, 10 bugs a minute. <laughs> So, so instead of using the arrow keys, the first change you'll need to make, and there's a lot of veterans are going to be very happy to see this. Uh, for many years, and I mean it, for about seven years, six or seven years that I taught them to beginners, I refused to allow uh, the use of the arrow keys because I was like, that is not VI, blah, blah, blah. In fact, it was such a big deal with me that I, um, I actually, whoops. I broke something. It was such a big deal with me at the time that I, um, uh, let's see here. Wait, wait, where did my, oh, thing go? I forgot. Oh, there we go. So it was such a big deal with me at the time that I actually added to the VimRC, uh, some code to disable the arrow keys. So if, and we're going to, we're going to put this in here later when we go through our Vim configuration, but just know that if you want to uncomment these configuration lines in the VimRC file, you can do that. And as soon as you do that, it will force you to use that those instead of using the arrow keys. So if you want to do that, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and exit the two. You remember how to exit? Colon Q exit. Okay. We, we can go ahead and exit, right? So let's let's actually use VI to go turn on the arrow keys. So now we can only use arrow keys. So we're going to, we're going to make our first actual configuration change. We're going to go into our VimRC file on our, in our container. So the tilde means home and we're going to open that up. And again, I'm using my arrow keys, right? Oops. Uh, we need to go to the bottom of it. Where's, where aren't my arrow keys working? What did I do wrong? I must have turned my arrow keys off on accident. I think I did. So we're going to go to the bottom. We're, I'm, so you know about H, H, J, K, and L. They navigate you around. Let's go all the way to the bottom, right? All right. So, and uh, you don't know this yet, but we're going to delete a letter. We're going to delete. So delete is X. So whatever's under the cursor, if you type X, it'll delete it and keep you in command mode. So we're going to type X here, X here, X here. 
and then I'm typing J X J uh, X J X J X J X J you could have two X's there if you want um, okay if you if you happen to make a mistake right now and you're like oh no I don't want to save it colon Q exclamation point right so I'm still keeping you with those basics I don't want you to get too crazy yet um, all right so let's do this now we need to exit and we need to save it colon W you know that and then we're going to exit colon Q or you can combine them and do W colon WQ or colon QW either way so now we're going to exit and now when I go to do the Vim tutor right I'm going to type Vim tutor and I try to put the arrow keys it's not supposed to work you know what it did it threw out my configuration yeah it did it threw it out I, I just realized Vim tutor throws out your Vim RC which is kind of weird but watch if you do it on another file if you do it on another file see now look so if you try to open another file see how it says um use h instead use l instead see that down there so if you want to turn that on uh i used to have that on by default you can turn that on and that'll force you to use the right keys right so that's something you can enable if you want it's been disabled by default for some time now but apparently VimTutor turns it all off so i don't know we'll keep going so VimTutor. um it's going to take us probably the rest of the hour. So let's, let's go fast. So J H A to move around, hold the, hold down the J K until it repeats. And you move around, uh, use the down key to move to less than 1.2. If you're unsure, uh, about something you type, press escape to place you in normal mode. Um, yes, we haven't talked about, um, anything else uh, exiting Vim before exiting, learn these things. Um, all right. So, before exiting and learning the steps for the entire lesson, press the escape key. We talked about that already. You already know this. Colon Q exclamation point. You know that already. Uh, this is how you get back into it. Vim tutor enter if you need to come back. So that's stuff you already know already. Colon Q exclamation point throws it away. Learned it already. Next, text editing, deletion. X. We just did it, right? We just used X to delete whatever is under the under the cursor. And here it's actually going to have you do it. Press X to delete the character under the cursor. So you can go down here. And go down here and type X and delete the cow. Jump to click the D, V to click the V, R, L. Now there's no there's no checking you here. Uh, you don't know how to undo yet, but it to end, I'll just give it to you. It's escape U. Escape U is undo the last change. So, but that you don't know that yet. You will in a bit. Uh, now now that that line's correct, go on. Text editing insertion. I we already talked about it, right? I allows you to wherever you're at, it allows you to insert something. Now, if you just type I enter, it's going to put you into interactive insert mode, right? But you can actually insert a specific letter or something at a specific place. There is okay, I some space text missing in this file. Now you need to do escape. So this is where we get into the modal thing, right? So you know, you 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 can't push l l l l to move over because you can't navigate using those keys right now if you have the arrow keys you can which is why i taught you that way that's why i taught you to use the arrow keys because if you get stuck you can just use the arrow keys in insert mode to do the right thing is miss is from from this space space error 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 er, er, this line now in order to do that exact same task uh i'm just undoing Okay, in, in order to do the exact same task using the LJKL to, ma to move around, you're going to need to do it by switching modes three or four times. So rather than doing the arrows, right? Rather than doing the arrows, this is your first opportunity to practice switching back and forth quickly between insert mode and edit mode or command mode. Sorry. So we're going to go where we want to insert. So we want to see this is I sum space, right? But now in order to move, I push L. It's like, oh, I got to change modes. So control left bracket or escape. And I'm going to go over here. Missing I S I escape control left bracket, whatever. Missing uh, from space escape. This 
line space escape. So that's like what four or five modal changes between insert mode and and command mode, right? That spend some time on that line. I, I'm doing it because I do it all the time. Pause the video and practice doing that a couple times. Okay, pause the video and practice doing that a couple times. And if you want to, just just you know make it change it however you want. So appending A is append. So this this is one of the, okay. So before before we leave, um, uh, I think yeah. Before we leave this part text editing <clears throat> so I'm sorry before we leave this part of exiting vim there there are three other commands I want you to learn uh, that you need to know okay and they so I'm gonna make so let's make a section called bonus or put them in your notes however you want all right these are not covered by the tutorial and they should be one of them is ZZ two capitals Z Z is exactly the same what is ZZ the same as? What is it the same as? ZZ is the same as... Hopefully it get my command file. It might have thrown it out. Did it, did it throw it out? I think it did throw it out. Yeah, it throws out a file every time. That's so, so, that's so lame. Yeah, ZZ is the same as WQ. Okay, so... In fact, if you let's let's actually take a backup of this file. Should we do that? You you know about that too. So moving the cursor, exiting Vim. So there there's ZZ. ZZ uh, same as uh, colon WQ. Yeah, it is uh, colon WQ or QW. Okay, same as colon X. So those are all the same. I used to play a ZZ Top video during this to help people remember it. I personally use ZZ because that's what I was raised on. It's actually pretty damn easy to type. I don't have to... Shifting to get colon is pretty hard. So I'm going to tell you about that option. ZQ, which I don't... Strangely, I don't use ZQ. <laughs> ZQ is the same as colon and Q exclamation point. I, for some reason, I use Q exclamation point, but I don't use ZQ. And I don't know why. It's just, it's just my habit. But those are the same, so now you know, right? By the way, if we want to make a backup copy of this file, uh, instead of having it get rewritten every time, we're going to jump ahead. And let's do colon w slash temp slash foo. And that's going to save to make a copy of it. Well, there's already one there. So let's say uh, temp slash bar. How about that? So that saves a copy of this file into temp bar. So that if the Vim Tutor, Vim Tutor, I think resets every time you do it. So by doing that, you can go in and see your changes that you made. And the entire tutorial is just in a big file. Uh, capital Z, leave a swap file. I don't know. Swap files are disabled by default on everything, as far as I know. So, uh, yeah. If, if the, so VI will sometimes, sometimes you'll see a file in your directory with a little tilde at the end of it. That's kind of a backup swap file, but we don't we don't use those. I don't use them anyway. So anyway, let's keep going. So the other thing, I just wanted you to learn everything here, right? So this also doesn't talk about using uh, opening a file with you know vi attempt. So let's say let's do uh, colon ww temp bar or temp uh, work or something. Uh, so, uh, to save a copy to slash temp work. All right. So that's, that's how you do that. Uh, and then if you want to actually edit that when you can, you can do the tutorial by just editing the same file over and over again. They're going to tell you how to do that later, but I'm throwing in the stuff at the section where it makes sense to learn it, that they don't teach it to you. So X is delete the character. We did that already. And we're going to learn some other ways to, to do that. Um, so We've learned I, we've, let's see, we learned I, and I think they don't teach you, yeah, I don't, I don't think they teach you to use the, um, uh, capital I, I can't remember if they teach you it or not, so we'll have to come back to it. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't, okay, anyway, we're, so let's go down, we got seven lessons to go to, so we got a jam. 
editing a file. So you know how to edit a file now. Summary, there's your thing. Escape, double Q, uh, insert, and append. So A is append. Capital A is append. The, the thing I don't like about this is it teaches capital A to append to the end of a line, even though to insert is lowercase i. There's actually a... And it, it doesn't teach you the lowercase a, right? So... If you go to the end of the line and you type lowercase a, it does it, right? And escape. But what they're teaching you to do is to do capital A. Any Usually most of the commands that are capitals operate on the entire line. All right? Not always, but usually. So in this case, you can be way down here and you want to add to the end of the line with a very, very common command, a. And that opens up the line for editing and goes to the end. Well, reverse that. Uh seeing here missing here right i'm going to escape and i by the way when i escape i don't know if you saw this but after i do an edit when i do a control left bracket i almost my fingers intuitively do a colon w i always have done that it's just something that i always do so because i don't want my changes to be lost so i'll usually do an escape colon w like almost immediately uh, that's just my habit. When you're comfortable appending text, move on. Editing a file. Uh, WQ to save the file and exit. We already talked about this. Uh, WQ to save it and edit. After reading the above steps, understand do it. We already know that. We did it lots of times. Summary. So now you know how to edit and get out of the file. And you know how to insert at the end. All right. Deletion. So D D W. So... All of the D commands, and there are some really, really good D commands, okay? Uh, there's actually a command here that we're going to learn that's not in the list. Um, so, DW. So, b just know that when you're navigating around like this, right? From the middle of a word, you can type DW, and it will delete until the end of that word. Right? And if you want to undo that, we haven't learned it yet, but escape you escape you escape goes into his command mode and then you um the thing to note here is that believe it or not w is a navigation command see what it does you can type w anytime it's actually a nice way to scroll faster if you want to what does w do so they don't talk about this and they really should all of VI is a combination of an action and a navigation. Okay? All of it is a combination of an action and a navigation. So W is just moving around. What does D do? D just deletes. D, D is like a delete, but it requires, you see down here, put a D down here. That's because it's like, you, you type the D and I need to know what you want to delete. So what is what do you want to delete? And say, I want to delete up to the next word. So W goes up to the beginning of the next word. Right? And you can delete lots of things. So, like, so let's, um, W moves to the beginning of a word, right? Uh, and if you want to move to the end of the world, word, guess what? E. So you don't know this yet, but how, so if you, but basically if you learn the navigation commands and then you learn the actions, you can combine them to make any kind of thing. So W goes to the beginning of a word, right? But E, look at E. E goes to the end of a word. So you can probably guess, what does DE do? So let's say you don't want to delete that space, right? Maybe you want to keep that space there. You don't want to, like, you don't want to delete the whole thing. You could do a DE, and that would delete until the end of the word without, without deleting the space, which is probably what you want, right? You probably don't want this. You probably don't want DW because that, that gets rid of the space. So I think DW is a stupid thing to learn. I think you should learn DE, D, which is, you know, DE or DW, right? And the other thing to know here is that, and I'm just going to jump right in, is that you can put a number in front of any navigation command and it will repeat that navigation that many times. So like if I want to jump two words, instead of going WW, I can go up here and I can type 2W. You see that? Or I can go up here and I can type 3W. See that? Now, you know where this is going, right? D, look down the bottom left, bottom right, you can see it. D, 2, 
W. Boom, right? Okay, and now it just gets really easy because once you learn that to, to navigate to the end of a line is, guess what? Dollar or dollar sign, which you already know from Ed, or to go to the beginning of a line is zero. You can now combine that to delete entire things. So you can do D dollar, it deletes everything to the end of the line, which is, the, which is just the same exact thing as a capital D, which we haven't got to yet. So again, every time I'm undoing, I'm escape Ewing. And, and you're seeing me type that down on the bottom left every time I type it. All right, so, so DW gets rid of a thing, right? Uh, and, and that's kind of cool. So uh, by the way, you already know about the I command, right? So let's say we wanted to put the word really three times. Check this out. This is really cool. This is not covered, but this is so cool. I really space, yeah? Enter. All right, so that inserted one really, right? But let's undo that. So escape, escape you. Let's do it so it does three of them. Three I really, comma, space, escape. Really, really, really. So, yeah. So you can actually use, you can actually use the, um, the repetition with actions as well. So what if I wanted to delete these three words? I could do D3W or I could also do this. 3DW. Right? Did it do it? Actually, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, so we have four words because these this comma counts as a word. All right, so let's do four DW. There, you see that? Uh-huh. And what's really powerful, and this is the most powerful command of all, we're gonna jump ahead to it, is combining these with line searching. So it doesn't cover this at all. So if I wanna delete, let's, let's undo what I just did. I wanna delete all of these words up to the word sure. This is the most common editing command I ever use. I want, I'm like way down here, right? So I get to where I want to be and I don't want to count all those stupid letters and how many things I see people complain because I don't have like how many lines or all that stuff because I don't use it. I use search centric approaches to VI. And so if I want to delete everything from here up to the word, sure, I do D letter T and then S U R whoops. Is that right? Wait, I'm doing this wrong. I, I'm thinking about it. No, wait. D slash sure. There. Do you see that? That is why I don't use line commands. I look for something in the text and then I do whatever I'm going to do up to that search point. And you haven't learned about that yet. But but so if I want to, I can go D, D slash sure. And so it deletes everything up to the sure word. All right, let's keep going. Let's go faster. We're kind of running out of time, aren't we? What time are we at? Um, so, so more deletion commands. D dollar is the one I just talked to you about. Delete to the end of the line. You learned that. The alternative to DW, by the way, is capital D. So if you want to delete to the end of the line, capital D will do that. I use capital D instead of instead of D dollar. Make sure to put that in your notes. I use capital D instead of D dollar. I don't ever use D dollar ever. It's it's too hard to hit and I don't need to. I can do capital D. All right. So the thing I don't understand about this is they 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 covered capital A to to go to the end of the line and add it, the capital command, instead of you know doing this version. And but but here they completely omitted uh, a, a possibility that's much easier to use for a beginner, capital D. I have no idea why they did that. It it's I think it's they may have not even known. <laughs> on operations of motion okay so here's the whole thing about motion d short list w till the end of the next word e to the end of the current word we talked about that and and dollar to the end of the word that's probably why they did it but you can also uh motions the most important motion here is uh uh to the next occurrence of the word foo that is so valuable. And once you learn that, you probably won't do much more. Use DD to lead a line. Yeah, we haven't got that yet. Capital D to lead to the end of the line. 
Yeah, people, we're going to get to YY and DD, and that's coming up. So if you don't, if you know already, some of these commands, you can double them and it will operate on the entire line. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Use, use account for emotion. We just talked about this 2W, 3E, 0 to move the start line, 2 and 3 are different. Okay, good. They covered that. How to account for delete more D motion. Gosh, I guess we did the same thing. I didn't realize it. We already did that. I'm not going to do it. So there we go. So operating on lines, less than 2.6. There are many, many commands that have, if you do, if you double them up, uh, not many, there's at least two, they operate on the whole line. So if I want to delete, roses are red, mud is fun. So if I want to delete this line, DD, right? Uh, if you want to delete two lines, 2DD, right? So that's that's the thing. I do DD all the time. In fact, DD is a good way to move a line. So you don't know about P yet, but it's worth teaching it to you. You're going to learn it later. If I want to put mud is fun above here, DD, up arrow, up arrow, P. And P will paste the last thing that was deleted or yanked. So that's how you cut and paste. DD, P. DD, P. Uh, I don't know if they're going to cover it, but... One of the most powerful delete commands ever, and I got to give Primagen credit for this one. Uh, Primagen uses this all the time, and I was unaware of it. Uh, it's a very big vimism. It's actually one of my favorite things to do now. Uh, and I'm, you just, I would suggest you just memorize it. It's called DAP, D-A-P. So you can be anywhere in a paragraph. Uh, DD is like cut. Yeah, DD is a delete. It's a cut. But it puts it in your buffer, and then you can paste it out later. So this, the, the command DAP, yeah, the, the, this is not taught in the tutorial. I, th I really wish it was. DAP deletes the current paragraph wherever you are in the paragraph and puts it into the buffer. So remember, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, <coughs> I might need some more beer. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, it's really powerful. So I use it for everything when I'm coding. So you remember that whole approach of like DD and just for a single line? Imagine having that same level of, of ease when you're dealing with an entire paragraph. So you're in the middle of the paragraph and you DAP that thing. Now you go up here and I want to dump it right here. P dumps the entire paragraph up there. Uh, you've been using virtual mode. Oh, no way, man. DAP is like so better. We have people, oh my effing godding. <laughs> Look, I'm serious. I'm giving Prime eight. I'm giving Prime credit. I, I, you know, Pr Crime and I, Prime and I have differences on many things, but on that one thing, 100% credit is due. He is the one who taught me that. I saw him do that, and I had been using Vim for 30 years and did not know that. So, so I strongly suggest you learn it. By the way, if you keep Control Control undoing Control U, that's probably a good thing to learn too is like escape you escape you escape you it will keep undoing all of the things that you just did probably worth learning that now even though they teach it to you later all right so so here we go again dap i'm going to put that guy over here paste dap i'm going to put him down here paste oh put a line in here so just insert a line and get rid of this one let's say we don't want any of that there all right you know dap and get rid of that right and it's actually really easy to, to type and then it gets better. It gets better. I'm going to show you one. Of, I'm kind of. This is for the people who already know VI, but it gets better. It gets. It gets better. They are vimisms, and they don't work in VI. Yeah, I probably shouldn't teach it. You know what? Let's let's test. Vap D. Yeah. There's also there's also believe it or not. <laughs> there's FAP. <laughs> You'll never forget that one. Um, let me show you. So, so uh, yeah. So let me let me show. You. There's this. I, actually, there's two things I want to figure out here. Is it a vimism or not? So let's go actually start up. Uh, Podman run iet uh, dash dash rm alpine. Let's go see if so, what what a vimism is, right? So we're on alpine to try this. So temp foo. And we're going to make a paragraph. And now I'm going to go up here and I'm dapping. No dap. Nothing register in D. So, I, you know what? That's why I didn't know it. That's why I didn't know it. Because it's a vimism. There are a number of vimisms that, you know, as I said, I was re re really hesitant to put them in my muscle memory. 
Um, I know how to delete a paragraph without it. So to delete a paragraph, you get to the very top of the paragraph and you D and then, uh, what is it? Um, uh, right curly bracket and that will delete the whole thing and that works in VI, right? That works in VI. But if you are, have Vim, you can DAP and it'll do the current paragraph, right? So, so, so that, that, that is that. Um, and, and so, as I said, I, I'm not against Vimisms. I just say, make sure you know that you're using a Vimism. Okay. Make sure that you know what, you know, you're putting into your muscle memory. Uh, and that's why I didn't know that. But, but, um, if you are in, if you're editing, if you're editing code, I seriously, it's so stinking cool. I, I got to show you. I got to show you. So, so if I'm editing code, right, let's edit some Go code. Uh, let's edit some Go code. Uh, via temp main dot Go. All right. So here's the Go program, right? I'm going to say you could actually have, let's say I want to make a copy of that entire function, right? Including its documentation some doc right and let's say that it has spaces in it right comment this is so cool this is a vimism but it's one of the coolest things ever uh, i want to delete that entire function d a f yeah did you see what just happened so vim has a navigational thing called f which will go to the beginning of it and get the whole thing yeah daf and then you just paste it right here's what's even better let's say you want just the in guts of the function right if you just want the guts of the function it's dif and then you can paste those guts someplace else those two things, the DAF and the DAF, those those are advanced and they're for programming. They're going to come in really handy, but I guarantee you, you never seen those. People are freaking out in the chat. So, those particular things are specific to coding, and the reason they work is because Vim knows what type of syntax the programming language is, right? So no matter what, if you can be in Python, you can be in any language. The language syntax is known to Vim. So so when you want to, instead of grabbing, if I tried a paragraph here, DAP, what would it get? It'd only get the first the first paragraph, which is you know stuff that has spaces around it or blank lines. I don't want that. I want the whole function. So DAF uh, will get the whole thing. You can also YAF, which will just yank the whole function if you want to copy it again. You want to make another copy of the function. You want to make 10 copies of the function. YAF. So let's go back to the tutorial now. Uh, but I did want to show you that stuff. Okay, so some of our advanced are people. Uh, cap. You can also cap. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, um, and by the way, that is so much faster than using the mouse for anything. I see people move functions around and stuff with the mouse. And unless there's like more than 50, 60 lines... And even then, you know what's really great? You can be in the middle of like a like a 90 line function and you can rearrange that thing. You can even exit a file and open another file and cut and paste it between there just with one YAF or DAF and then go to the other file and P and then dump it right, right where you want it with one command. That is way faster than, than using the mouse. Way faster. All right, so... Um, uh, double double to operate on a line also works to operate as mentioned above. So DD deletes it. Undo. We've been doing undo all day. Uh, so escape U. My fingers have just memorized escape U. Every time you do escape U, it it, it does the thing. If you want to undo a whole line, it's it's capital U, but I never use it. I never use it. I just use U. I escape U all the stuff. Um, things like D line number G. Yeah, a lot of people do that. But that is a waste of time. I only do that if I have more than one function I want to grab at a time. Like if I have multiple lines and I know where I want to go, then I'll I'll go right to that line. And I never ever ever use relative line numbers. So uh, we're talking about advanced things that people don't know about yet. If you ever see somebody with line numbers in their vim, that's because they're still using those those methods. And I I find those methods to be tedious and and, and inefficient. People give me shit all the time for not having line numbers enabled, relative line numbers. 
because they think that I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. That's a waste of time. It's faster to do search search centric cutting and pasting than it is to memorize a line number or know or count the exact number of relative line numbers, which may be off the screen. And I just would rather not do that. So search centric navigation of them is my preference. Now type U to undo the last execute. We did all this. Okay, this is a weirdism. This is a weird vimism. So actually, I think this is a viism as well. Control R will redo a thing. So let's say you delete something, you don't want it to be deleted. Uh, that would be undo, right? But let's say you want to redo your undo, right? That's control R, which is really weird. So control R undoes your last undo. <laughs> uh yes so uh so anyway yeah so that's that's i have had to do redo a couple times i i have gotten kind of overzealous while i was writing my blog or something and i've accidentally deleted stuff i just wrote without saving it and i was really sad until i remembered control r so control r will rewrite what you just deleted or what you just undid or something you'll you'll need it you'll need it it just it's just not you're not gonna need it very much okay uh so that's lesson two we're almost through so dw de d dollar we did all those you know how to do dd right and we know how to do undo and redo put we already learned this so put is just paste right so we're going to delete this line dd and we can either undo it right or we can go put it down here p and now that you know about DAP and stuff, you can do that whole thing, the same thing. So we're going to delete this whole paragraph, D-A-P, and we're going to go up here and dump it right here. We're going to put it P. It puts it on the line after, by the way. So you, you, you might not want to have it be in the immediate line, right? And we undo and keep undoing all those changes. All right, so that's, we, we, we did all that. So that's the put command. You're going to use put and paste all the time. You're going to use it all the time. So stop and learn that. Rx to replace the character of the cursor with X. Uh, move the cursor to the first line below. Oh, right. So R, I use R, but not very much. Um, R is only, it's the same as X. It doesn't go into insert mode. It just replaces the current letter, the current character that you're on, right? So we would type RY here, right? Now, the this doesn't this isn't very useful until you start needing to do it a lot because then you can just repeat with a dot with dot which you don't know yet but so that's it it's just r uh rx to replace a character with cursor x yeah so so line is like rn uh rp someone pressed re uh, some wrong RN. All right, so you got that one. Uh, you should be learning by doing, not memorizing. You should be doing this. Good point. Change to the end of a word, CE. So, um, so somebody mentioned cap, which you can also do. Something. Right. I ended it. So, so if you want to change to the end, this, the other, this is another one of those cases where they don't, they didn't give you the, bit, the uppercase equivalent i always use, i never use ce i guess changing to the end of the word is fine so ce i i uh i use ce sometimes but not usually um so let's see ce hello escape right so that what that does is it deletes it and then puts you into edit mode at that spot you can do that same thing using the longer winded commands, you know, going about it the other way. Uh, otherwise, you can just do that, right? My, as I said, I don't like navigating to the end of Word and all that stuff. I never do that. My most, in fact, you, you can replace all of the navigation stuff with a slash. And and you'll be so far ahead. So, like, if I if I want to change, if I want to change this line up to the line, up to the word line... I know that I want to chase all this stuff up to the word line. It's far more efficient to, instead of counting the number of lines. I never fucking count all the lines. All this stuff that has a number involved is a waste of time because you have to, you almost never have time to count them all up and know where you're at or something. But what you always can do is search to that unique thing. 
Okay, so I, if I want instead of doing CE here, uh, first of all, capital C just changes to you know everything at the end, of, all the way to the end of the line, just like you know, Control A does, and D capital D doesn't delete the whole thing. But let's say I want to change, I only want to change everything up to the word line, C slash line, boom, done, enter. See that? I do that all the time. In fact, that is the only thing you need to memorize in your fingers. Because guess what? What if I wanted to change? more than that what if i wanted to change everything all the way up to the word correct rather than having it be on the same word or line or shit i only thing i have to remember is the slash so in in my case i only know c slash so i do c slash correct and now i'm changing all of that stuff right you see that it got rid of all those lines it deleted those lines and started me there so all of the commands, the D, the, the 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 D command and the C command, the more powerful variation of that is D slash and C slash, because that will always go to the next thing that you match, right? And you can get so good at that. Uh, you can another way to do that uh, is, uh, it, yeah. So another thing you need to do is. You can do, if you want to do it in the same line, which I find myself not doing that much anymore, but you could do D, T, L, and that will go up to the L. So you see what I just did? So there's another navigation command. It's called T, and that will go up to the next, it'll, it'll, it'll go up to the next letter of that type. But again, you don't need it. You don't need it. Because you could just use slash for everything. So I could do instead of doing that, I could do I could do this. I could do change slash L and it will change up to the first L. Same same as the other thing. So the only thing you need to memorize is D slash and C slash. Right? Now if it's to the end of the line, okay, fine. D capital C, or I want to add to the end of the line capital A. But so capital D and capital C are valid. But other than that, the only thing you need to memorize is C slash and D slash. Uh, and, and, you know, the variations like FAP and CAP and stuff like that, that, that will do an entire paragraph like we just talked about. Right. The, doing a paragraph is, is, is not going to be doable with with the with slash commands because you can't match the, the end of a paragraph. Right. You can, but that's not the way to do it. So for that, you should use DAP or DAP or CAP and that kind of thing or, or if a CAP. OK, so. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. You, look, if somebody somebody is saying that they need to know what line number they're on in order to see the errors. Well, that is already here, my friends. That is already here, obviously. Right down here, right? Rather than... Okay, there's a lot of reasons to not have line numbers on. I used to love it. Set number... People think they have line numbers. Any, everybody, any, first of all, you just you just handed off. You just threw away anywhere from from four to six columns of your left line, so you get less stuff on the screen. Some people like it. I hate it. The only way I ever have line numbers on is if I am have somebody else looking at my code. It's the only time. It's a distraction. I hate it. Uh, why? Do, why? Because I don't need it. I don't need it. Why? Because the line number is right here. And I regularly do this. If you if you watch me doing my co-working stuff, you'll see me. I'll be looking at the Go errors, and it'll say what line number it's on. And I'll look at the line number there, down in the bottom line. Or I see what the line number is, and I go straight to the freaking line number. 20 capital G, which we're going to do. 20 capital G. Now I know I'm on line 20 because it's down here. I don't need freaking line numbers. Line numbers are a waste of terminal space unless you're sharing a screen with somebody else. Period. I'm just going to say that. If you if you want to do it, obviously you can. I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, it's a distraction. It 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 is harder. It it looks cool. I get it, but it's, to me it's a distraction. And I don't ever use it. Uh, uh, okay. So you're going to change your whole workflow. <laughs> well, well, good luck with that. I mean, you should like think about it though. I did. I I got new tips from other people, and I had I changed my workflow all the time. So. All right, so let's keep going. We've only, we we got set. We got to get to seven lessons, and I swear to God, we're not leaving this until we do. The change operation. We already did this, right? We know about changing GC dollar. We did that already. So the summary. You learned about changing. Yay! Cursor location and file status. Okay, so somebody was just telling me that they don't have line numbers. So if you want line numbers, just do this. Do colon set and u, and that'll give you your line numbers. Okay. 
And if you want to turn off your line numbers, we're going to do that. You know what? They don't even cover the set commands in the tutorial. It's just really lame. So colon set no new, no new. You don't want those anymore, right? Colon set new colon set. Uh, is it rel num? No, what is it? Set. What is it? Rel. Oh, relative number. Relative. If you type tab, you can get the there's relative number. People, there are a lot of people who think this is a good idea. I I think it's so annoying and distracting and horrible. RNU, I hate it. The people that think this is a good idea think that that it's a, that you're going to be able to like, hey, I want to delete up, you know, to line to the previous line 17, and they are using numbers for everything, and I just laugh at them because it's always faster to use the slash to search to get to that thing because most of the time you don't even want to go to the line number, you want to go to someplace inside of the line, and that can be done with a slash or the or the reverse version of a slash. It can't be done with a relative line number, so just just say no. Set no new. These are not things that I have arrived at lightly. I mean, I, this is, you know, I, I seriously, <laughs> RNU. Yeah, I, I do not. All right. So anyway, control G shows the location. So if you get lost and you're, you don't have configured, you know, you got an old school VM or uh, old school VI, control G will show you where you are. Okay. So if you ever get lost and you don't have numbers or you're, you're on an old version of M, go ahead and do that. Um, you can actually turn the ruler on, set ruler. That turns on the thing down here. We're going to learn all those configurations as we go through the MRC, maybe next week. Uh, there's lots and lots of things that you can customize, and uh, especially with VIM. And if it, people use NeoVim for anything, it's because they can customize it even further. Unfortunately, the way that they customize it makes it so that their configuration that they just customize doesn't work anywhere except for systems that have NVIM, NeoVim installed, which is pretty much nothing. Um, so, so anyway, control, hold down the control key and press G. Okay, we did that. Capital G is really important. Uh, so capital G goes to the end of the program. While we're at it, let's type uh, GG which goes to the top. Now, I learned the hard way that GG is a VIMism. So capital G goes to the end, and that's supported by VI. GG is a VIMism. And I use it all the time, and I was like, what the hell? Right? So you already know the alternative. And by the way, I would suggest maybe that you do it. Anybody, anybody remember the command in ED to move to the right line number? You've got it. Ma's got it. So... If you want to go to the end of the full the file, what do you do? Right? So so anytime this is why we learn ed first. So there are ed equivalents of every single thing that we use that will work on any system that supports ed. So it's worth learning them, right? So when, instead of learning just G, capital G, which is a vimism, I, it's not a vimism, it's a, it's a viism, but still you can know that colon, colon percent is going to go to the end because you've already learned that because you learned ed. You know that colon one, just typing a number in ed, will take you to that line number, right? So there's really no reason to learn GG, really, unless you think it's faster. And GG maybe you think GG is faster. Okay, it's a little bit faster, right? But it won't work everywhere. So is that worth memorizing? I don't know. I'll let you make that decision. I don't think capital G is worth memorizing. I think exclamation point percent is better. You know why? Because you can use those navigation commands to do things later. You can't do that with capital G necessarily. It doesn't work. In fact, I know that doesn't work. But but the percent navigator always will work. So let's say I want to go to the top, the colon one. That's a command that will work, right? You remember the things we were talking about, about combining navigation with commands? Well, they're gonna we're gonna combine those with the colon eventually, and you're gonna see like amazing things. So for example, let's say we want to delete this preamble, right? So I'm on this line. I don't give a shit about how many line numbers I am. I want to delete from here to the top of the file. How do I do it? I bet you already know. How do I delete to the top of the file? Now you could use the command mode stuff. Right? You could use the command mode stuff. You could use D, GG. That deletes it to the top of the file. Right? 
Let's say you want to delete everything in the file to the end of the file. D capital G deletes everything down. Now you need to make sure you undo that, right? You just delete your whole tutorial. But those commands can also be done from X. So you can say, uh, I want to delete until the top of the file. Uh, I think it's, I think it's one. No, that's just, no, what am I doing? I'm doing it wrong. We have to do the X command. So it's, uh, we need to navigate. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give that to you. It's too complicated. It's, it's, we already, you already know it, but it's an ed command. See if you can, for bonus points, see if you can figure it out. It's an ed command. <laughs> so you, you want to go from the current spot to line number one, or you want to go from one to the current spot, right? And you want to delete that. Anybody get that one? That's kind of an advanced one. The problem I'm trying to tell you is, is that you can use the ed commands or you can use the vimisms, right? But from anywhere in the file, and by the way, the reason that people have relative numbers and stuff like that, one of the reasons is because those ed commands, those commands that we just did, those x commands, they actually are easier to do if you know the exact line number because it's all line number based. It's not, it doesn't, it, it is, you can make it search centric, but it's that kind of stuff is line number based. So the people that are big into line numbers are big into using colon commands. All right. So let's go on. I don't remember where we are. By the way, I, I'm just scrolling down, right? If you want to go down one screen faster, control N. Oh no, they turned it off. That's sad. They did. They turned it off. That's too bad. They turned off paging. Oh well. At least you don't know that yet. Never mind. I need to explore percent more, yeah. Um if you use the percent by itself, it'll operate against every line on the in the entire program. Um using account to delete more. Um what lesson are we on? Lesson four. So let's search. Lesson Let's just search for all the lessons. I'm going to search for lesson, and then I'm going to push N to go to the next lesson. We haven't learned searching yet, but now you just did. Okay, so I'm just pushing N to keep jumping around. All right, here we go. So changes, there's the G. Uh, G and GG, you know about that, right? Uh, type, type slash followed by the phrase. Search for the phrase. I already taught you this one. The search command is by far the most important positional command you'll ever use. And it's, it's just so important. And once you do a search, which we just did, you can then type N to repeat the search. And this gets extremely powerful because you can repeat the last phrase and then you can combine that with a command. And we haven't got there yet, but if, by using the dot, it'll repeat whatever the last command was. So let me, let me show you how powerful this is. So if I want to change every, every word the to something else, right? I type slash the, enter, and now I type n, and it jumps me to the does. Now, if you're using my version of Vim, it will actually make all of the keyword searches red. So you'll know when the next one's coming up. It makes it more visual, right? And that's a configuration I strongly recommend. If you want to go back, you just push shift, and it goes up. This searchability, this is one of the things when they call, when they call, when they talk about Vim mappings. So you're going to run into all kinds of programs, including your, your command line history that can be navigated using Vimisms, Vim mappings. And this is one of the main ones. You're going to find that this method of searching is, is, is the same as the pager. It's the same as man pages. It's the same as links has it built in. Um, so you're going to find this a lot. This is built in, in K9S if you're a Kubernetes person. So these, this is why I suggest people learn Vimisms anyway, because these Vimisms for navigation, including the arrow keys and stuff, I mean the JKH, HJKL, are built into everything. All right, so we've got the N here. So I'm going to, but let's, let's, what if we wanted to delete all the thes? Or maybe we didn't want to delete all the thes. Maybe we wanted to delete some of the thes, Right. So we go into that, that the, you already know how to delete a word, right? DW, DW, DW deletes the word and the space after it, right? Okay, and now, did you see, did you see how I didn't leave insert mode? Now let's go find the next one. N, 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 N. Oh, let's go back up. Okay, let's delete this the. Now I could do DW again, or I could use dot. Dot is the last action. All right, now watch, watch how powerful this is when you combine it. 
So let's say I want to I want to scan through all the, the thes and I want to delete each one as we're going. So I type n to get to the next one and then period to delete it. N to type to this one, period to delete it. N to type to this one, period to delete it. See what I mean? When you combine the search ability and the n to repeat the last search and you reply you combine the period to repeat the last editing command your sky's the limit, man. You you can do all kinds of things. You don't really need macros. Vim macros, we're not going to learn them, but um, that's something you have to learn on your own. Vim macros are extremely powerful, but they're only really powerful for very complex tasks. Like you want to do multiple edits and, and, and insert and add, insert and exit, you know, insert mode and all that kind of thing. Most of the time, though, you just, you're totally fine just doing the repeat stuff and the searchability. Okay. Uh, let's go back where you came from. Press control zero. I've never used it. Control I goes forward. Never used it. Um, uh, to search for a phrase in a backward direction. Oh, there we go. Question mark. So question mark uh, goes up, right? I think I, I don't understand why question mark. I don't know why question mark is. I don't use question mark. I, I don't. Oh. Why would you use that? I don't use that. I use slash and then I use and then I use capital N. I use slash the and then it finds the next the which is not the one I want and then I do two up ends, which is lazier to remember. It's it's, it's more steps, but I don't I don't ever use exclamation point. Except uh, question mark goes up. So just so you know, I don't ever use it. Um. All right. So let's keep going. We got we got three more to cover. Yeah. Bye, everybody. If you have to leave, we've only got um a few more minutes left to go. So type percent to find a matching. Okay, so um, I don't use this. I, I very rarely I will use this. Um, this the only time this is really useful is when you're debugging code, and usually when you're debugging. Because let's say you have a lot of code in here, right? Like you have like lots and lots of parentheses. Uh, you know, some it's like you got lots of parentheses in there. And you can't, you don't know what you're talking about, right? And you want to find the other one. So you you would do the percent for that, right? And that just toggles back and forth and it shows you what percent you're on. Most, I don't normally need this because any decent code plugin or editor will clean this stuff up for you. It will show you where the error is. But on occasion, you need it. So same thing down here. I want to get on that and I do the percent and I go back and forth. That pop that pops. It's worth knowing about, but I I very rarely need that. Extremely rarely. Um, so I don't know. It's worth. I mean, they think it's worth knowing as a beginner. I disagree. A program a match parentheses. Okay, fine. And then out of nowhere, they throw in this highly complicated regular expression match, which we already covered last week. So we're not going to cover it. When we did Ed, we already learned. That you guys know, everybody who was here last week knows that this command is actually not VI. This is an X command, right? What does it do? This says change the occurrence of old to new to G. If you want to see all about that, watch the video last week. The video last week, we went through this entirely. And before that, I think we covered regular expressions, right? So that's all you need to know about that. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cover it. That's substitute, right? So here, the, the thing that's so bad about this tutorial is it doesn't even tell you the difference between the X commands and the VI commands. This entire section here for the substitute command is not a Vim tutorial. This is, this is a tutorial about how to use X. And you already know that if you went through the, the thing last week. So this changes the occurrence in the entire file. Uh, uh, a prompt you can actually put a prompt if you want I wouldn't uh, this changes it to the line numbers we talked about that uh, you can combine these navigation commands with other things like D or whatever to delete everything we showed that earlier today uh, if you seriously if you want to know about the substitution command watch the video from last week um, so that is it for that how to execute an external command this is my favorite command in all of them this is the most, I call it so powerful, I call it the magic wand. And in fact, if you if you go to my Art of X tools, I made a special thing just about this. It's called VI Magic. Uh, it's also the least understood 
of all the commands. Um, and I actually put it here. Those who don't understand the power of full shell integration build stupid things like NeoBim. If you know how to use the magic wand, you can integrate any shell scripting. I, I think slash is convenient. Yeah, I like slash because it's always under my finger. Um, by by using the magic wand command, you can see this. This is the line. You can take a line of code and you can transform that. It uses something called Unix filters. We're not going to do any Unix filters now, but we are definitely going to cover them later. Uh, when we start to write bash, the bash code that we write is going, we're going to write a Unix filter. Uh, but Lua. <laughs> uh, so, so here we go. So you see this uh, colon exclamation point. Now, um, uh, I happen to like, it didn't say this, but, um, so this, this is not as useful as it's so sad that they didn't, they didn't teach it to you, um, to save the changes. W K. Right. <laughs> this is so sad. They, they teach you how to execute an external command, but they don't teach you how to run an external command and replace the current line with the output. Uh, so Seriously, they, they're totally missing the coolest thing you can possibly do here. All right, let, let me, I'm going to show you back on my editor. So, so you might not, you, you can open up another editor if you want. So let me show you this. Um, anyway, let's do, we're going to write some shell code. We're going to write code that writes code. All right. Temp foo. All right, so so let, what do we got here? We got a we got some full of bin bash. We're gonna learn bin bash. We're gonna we're gonna go through it. So let's actually write some code that writes code. All right, so so for i in zero, we want one to ten. Uh, this is a loop. We're gonna learn about all of this. Do and we're gonna print it. Echo. Uh, the line number and then a period after that and being very lazy right so let's say I don't want to write all that in there right so here is the magic what you do is you position your cursor on the line it can be anywhere on the line anywhere on the line and and then you execute two exclamation points uh, bang bang exclamation point exclamation point and you'll see what it does is this is a vimism but it converts it into an X command the X command says, send the current line to the command that I'm about to type and then replace that line with the output from that command. Okay. So, so if I do that, I can go down here and I do bang, bang, bash. I send that line. That line is, is legitimate bash code. I could type it as a bash command. And so I send it to the interpreter and I run it and it runs it. Pretty cool, huh? If I want to undo it, I undo it. Right. I can write that exact same code in any language, any language that has an interpreter, Python. And by, by the way, what would it be in Python? I don't even remember. You could write it in Python. You could write it in Perl. You could write it in Ruby. Any language that can be interpreted can do this, can run it. And, it, and that does work with functions too. Yeah. If you have functions, it'll work too. Sometimes it works with functions. Yes. If you're, if you're inside of a shell, if you're inside of shell code. Now, this is important because this one does not work uh, in in uh, this one does not work in other VI system systems, and I'm actually going to show you that right now. So let's go to Alpine again. Where's my Alpine? All right. So here we have an Alpine program using the old school VI, which is not even really VI. Uh, it's a multi cal binary combined with all the other ones using BusyBox, but still, uh, it's important to know that if I do the same thing here, so echo something. That if I bang bang that, first of all, it says, "Oh, can't do it." Dollar an exclamation point is not in implemented, right? And you can't you can't even do. I don't even think you can do the X command. I don't think you can. Um, bash not found. Oh well, okay. Let's pass it to shell then. Colon dot exclamation point sh. And it see what it did. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. So vim and vi behave differently when dealing with that kind of stuff. Uh, so, so that is significantly different. In fact, right now you're kind of confused because like, wait, I have a prompt. What the hell? Okay. 
and by the way, if you're a hacker, this is very interesting to know. If you have access to VI, you have access to the shell, right? So, and that is what they're trying to teach you. What they're trying to teach you is that in the, in the tutorial is that if you type colon uh, exclamation point, you can type ls and it will run the program from inside of VI and you see how it, it's running a shell, right? And then I press enter and it throws away the terminal and it reopens your own previous version, right? I find no use for that whatsoever. I have find no use. I find two exclamation points extremely valuable because you know I can run the code as a magic wand and replace the output. And if you want to see some more examples of that, go to rdbx.gg slash vi magic and you'll see them all. They're all here. Uh, you can actually do complicated math, right? Let's try some complicated math. Yeah, you can do. You can use the math, the math editor. Uh, uh, compiling code while coding. I I I usually have a separate terminal for that. That's my flow. So a lot of people like to compile from inside of their editor. I do not do that because I usually want to see a full screen and I want to be able to zoom in on that screen. Uh, people like compilers. They like to do that. That's one of the reasons they do it. If you like that, fine. I don't. I, I usually want to have an ENTR command that is going to detect changes to my file and compile in a separate window so that I don't have to leave my editing session at all. Does you follow what I'm saying here? Let me, let me show you what I mean by that. This is pretty advanced stuff. You guys might not know this yet. We haven't learned the NTR command yet. But if I wanted to do that, so I can do main.go, right? So let's, let's do, let me, let me just show you what I mean so you can get us handle as a justification about why they do it. So, so uh, I'm going to write ENTR. You don't know this command yet, but it's a very powerful command. We want to clear the screen and clear the screen. And then we want to run go run uh, temp main.go. Uh, if the the file uh, temp main.go changes, you don't know that you'll learn it eventually. All right. So so this is my preferred workflow. I have a window open that's doing my compilation on the fly anytime a file changes. And and depending on how long it takes to do the compilation, right? And then uh, I I go edit main.go, and we're gonna say package main right and we're going to save that that's a valid go program uh expect to package bound eof um okay there we go so so it got saved and it got detected and it's like oh you don't have a main function in here so funk main uh for ln main uh hello world okay there's your first go program uh-oh I forgot a uh, 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 quote there and see how it ran the program. Hello, another world. That's my way of doing stuff. Um, I run my compiler in another screen and because I'm usually coding in Go, the compiler is so freaking fast that I can actually compile dynamically when any file changes and see the output. Uh, sometimes I'll be running Go tests instead of that, but, but I, I think it's I think it's a bad workflow. We are definitely going to learn ENTR later. Yeah, you just kind of did. But the question was, why aren't you using colon exclamation point for compiling? And that's because I think that that should be done in a separate pane or a separate window. We're going to learn Tmux in two weeks. Uh, so based on that, let's go back to the tutorial. We're kind of over time. Um, we're not kind of over time. We're pretty damn over time. We've only got two more sections left. Um, how to execute an external command. So it is useful though. So here's something cool. Remember instead of doing this, watch, watch this. Dude, this is super cool. All right. So let's say, let's say that you're writing uh, documentation, right? So this is, this is a very, that magic wand again. All right. So let's say, let's say I'm writing documentation about a file. Uh, no, whoops. Let's say you're writing documentation about a file. Okay, so let's say let's say I'm writing a documentation here, or I don't know, maybe let's say I'm updating my file here, and I want to say README, and I want at the end of my README, I want to put like, um, you know, or I, I don't know. Let's do something that's not destructive. So let's say I want a file. I want to say like list. Let's say uh, uh, files. I don't know. We want to make files list or something. And 
We're like, here is a list of files. This is super powerful. So I can actually type the command right here. I want to list all the files that end in uh, that begin with weak. You already know that, right? You're like, well, Rob, how am I replace? How do I replace that line with its output? Bang, bang, bash. Boom. See that? Pretty cool, huh? Let's say I want to put we I want to put a a star in front of all of them for some reason, or I want to number them. How about that? Let's say I want to number them. Uh, we could do that. We could say, what is it? Is it line number? I think it's, what is it? What is line number? I can't remember. You guys remember the command for line numbers? I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm spacing on it. Uh, what is the command to add line numbers? I, it's not LN. That's just, that's symbolically. That's a hard link. Uh, add line numbers, line numbers, add line numbers. And text file from batch. No, God, those are so horrible. Those are methods in Linux. It's a Unix thing. It's it's a command. It's like a really basic command. NL. NL. It's, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. All right. So let's say I want to change all those lines, right? No, 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 no. That set and use is going to turn line numbering. I actually want to add line. I want to add numbers to the text. So I can send that thing. Okay, did you see what I just did? This is another one of the magic wands. So this is exclamation point right curly bracket. See what it does down there? It sends all those lines to the command line and replaces them with their output. So I send those lines to the NL command and they are transformed and there's a line number put in front of them. I didn't have to write a plugin. I didn't have to go download some shit. I just used Unix as God intended. And, and I use it to replace using the Vimism with the capital exclamation point. If you really want to get good uh, with with VI, you have to master that. You just have to. It is mandatory learning. I'm not even kidding. So let me let me just summarize those really quickly because they're kind of related to that. So the, the, the double bang, the bang bang, right, that runs the current line. Okay? So that's the first one to memorize. Uh, you, by the way, you can do a bunch of other stuff here. So you can do, like, let's say I want to put the date here. Bang, bang, date. Let's say I want to add some things. All right. So I can say, blah, 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 uh, blah, 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 times, blah, 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 uh, plus, uh, plus, blah, 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 right? I can pass that entire line to the BC calculator and replace it with its output. Yeah. And now you can write your own filters that do all kinds of things like, oh, I don't know, take an entire markdown table that's got one column of numbers in it, add up all those numbers and provide a total at the end. Mm -hmm. And I've done that. I actually did that in another uh, uh, video recently. Uh, by the way, if you're going to do if you're going to do numbers like this and you're going to use division, uh, you need to set the scale. We're going to learn BC and DC later. But you need to set the scale like that. And if you do that, you pass that to BC, you'll get you'll get oops. Uh, is it, is it scale equals two? Yeah, I think it is. So there you go. Now you get a, now you get that, you get that kind of thing. The basic calculator, calculator. Yeah. So the, the point is, is that you can literally do anything that you could do from the command line can be done in a VM session and can be operated on the whole thing. If you want to comment this out, people use visual mode for comments. I think it's silly. If I want to comment all of that, how do I do it? I pass it through my CMT command and then I put whatever the hell comment I want right because it changed every one of those lines that is vim magic and if you don't know it learn it it's super powerful so the the essentials of it are the magic wand command are two exclamation points um there so this one runs a python program same sort of idea right we just run a python range uh the section one so exclamation point right curly bracket as we said right curly bracket we haven't covered it yet right curly bracket navigates to the beginning of the next blank line not to the beginning to the to the end of the line after which there is a blank line i suppose uh, it's the same thing that's used in dap for paragraph navigation right but the reason this is important is because if you want to you can have entire lines you can have entire programs and then slurp up that whole thing down to the end of that thing and send it to a program and run it or, as I just did, you can take multiple lines and pass them to a program instead of just the one line. Uh, and DC and BC, algebraic calculator, nice. I like to look at that. So, uh, you can also do this, you can use this to sort things. So, here's something fun. So, 
let's do this. You can combine all the stuff you already know, right? So, all right. So, so let's say let's say we want to sort that, right? So, exclamation point, right curly bracket, S O R T, boom. There you go, right? Now you have it. So you can run anything you would run from the command line and then replace it with its own stuff, including any code. This is why, by the way, my friends, the reason in a week or two, I don't know how long, we are going to exhaustively learn the Bash scripting language is because by learning the Bash scripting language and knowing what you just learned about VI, you can do anything. You don't need Lua. You don't need Vim script. You don't need anything but the standard Unix shell and VI's magic wands. It, once you have those two things, you will never write a plugin again. You'll, the only plugins you'll ever download will be syntax plugins and stuff like that, colorization. That's it. Because everything else that's ever going to modify anything in your system, you're going to actually make a little script for that, and it's going to do it, and it's going to transform, and it's going to take, it's going to take your editing sessions to a whole new level. Uh, this is blowing your mind. <laughs> Well, hopefully that's a good thing. Um, so, that seemed to work on BusyBox. No, I just showed you that. It doesn't. Magic Wand doesn't work in VI. BusyBox, it's a Vim, almost, it's a Vimism. It's a Vimism, unfortunately. Yeah. You cannot, you can accomplish the same sort of thing, but you have to go through a very roundabout way to do it if you're going to do VI. In that particular case, it's usually better to use set or an editor or something like that. Uh but but it absolutely is the magic wands as I call them are are absolutely vimisms. Um, so this here, uh, the colon one, uh, line numbers you can use line numbers if you want. Uh, so um, yeah, you can also do uh, I mean you can you can do the search command too, right? So you can combine it with the search. The magic wand, basically, you can combine with the search command and a bunch of other commands. You can comment stuff out using this method. You can actually write a very simple program to comment all the things out and then just use that program. Uh, and th this is what I'm saying is that Perl and Bash become really powerful at this point. This is why you should learn regular expressions too because those are. this is why we learned how to transform a file from the command line before we ever opened a terminal editor. Does that make sense now? If you've been doing the boost in order, it should make sense to you why we learned all of the file transformation stuff with sed and with sort and unique and, and appending to files and all that stuff before we learn this. Because when you combine all of that knowledge with your knowledge of ed and with your knowledge of how to use the magic wands in vim, specifically not vi, uh, you, get, you get that power and it, it is very powerful. Um, so, and, and unfortunately NVIM, NVIM does, NVI does not cover this. So, uh, so if you have BSD Unix, you're out of luck. Uh, if you have BusyBox or Alpine, you're out of luck with magic wands commands. So, uh, but usually when you're there, you just, you, you gotta get good. You're just doing minor edits anyway. So you're probably going to be okay. All right, let's wrap up the tutorial. We've, we've done way more than the tutorial. I, I hope you realize that at this point. Um, but I seriously want you to learn those that that magic that vim magic early in your editing process because learning search centricity and learning the magic you know wand command are going to transform your vim experience from the get-go for the rest of your life and and i guarantee you the people whose minds are being blown in here and there's a lot of people writing in the chat right now because they've never seen this raise your hand if you've been coding for more than five or ten years and vi and you never knew about the power of the exclamation point because there are a ton of people who don't know about that. How about it best to practice not using the cursor keys? Uh, I, we actually turned on uh, uh, a way. To, we, we covered that, Mozzie. We, 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 if you're using my, my practice, if you're using the practice tool that I made, the practice thing, you can go into the VimRC file at the bottom and you can uncomment these lines here and it will stop you. It will prevent you from using the arrow keys. Those are added specifically for that purpose. So if you, once you undo, we did this already, but once you have that, if you try to use the arrow keys, right, it'll, it'll, it should yell at you. Why isn't it yelling at me? It's not, it's not, it's, did I do it wrong? 
I must have been commenting the wrong thing. I don't know. Yep, there it goes. Use HL instead. See that down there? Yeah, so that's there. I'll add that to, to you. A lot of people didn't know about it. Okay, we're almost done. We got we're almost done. So more on writing files. Uh, w is to write to a file. Uh, if you actually put W and then another thing, it'll start writing to that other file. But it's important that you know that it doesn't change the default file that it's writing to. That's only to write to another file. Just make a note of that, okay? Um, and we'll keep going here. Boy, I would never use this. This is such a... Don't use this. They're telling you to execute deletes and RMs from subshells within Vim. This is an anti-pattern. Do not do this. Because you want to have a nice, clean terminal to do removes and deletes. A separate Tmux pane. Don't try to do that shit from inside of EI. That is horrible. That's somebody trying to do everything from inside of EI. By the way, if somebody tells you to learn Vim panes because they're really awesome, tell them, no, you're going to learn Tmux instead. Because Tmux works with everything, whether or not it's a VI session. Uh, selecting text to write. Uh, do not use visual mode. Don't use it. I'm just telling you it's not worth it. I have so many people who disagree with me about visual mode, and I'm just going to tell you right now is a waste of time. This, this is a, it's a stupid visual thing. No, don't do that. Don't do this. <sighs> Press V and move the cursor to the fifth item below. Notice that the text is highlighted. No, this is stupid. Don't do this. This is stupid. Don't use visual mode. I'm telling you, don't use it. It's not supported everywhere, and it's a waste. Look, you can do the same thing from visual mode using the slash that works everywhere, including VI. Don't use mouse mode either. Yeah. Seriously, look at this. Let's say you want visual mode. You want First of all, visual mode, you want it to pick from here to there, right? So, I don't know. Do this. Do D right bracket. Don't use visual mode. You don't need it. I'm just telling you, you don't need visual mode. People will tell you to use visual mode to make comments and do all kinds of things. You don't need it. If you learn a magic wand and you learn and you learn to make your own you, to do things properly, not only will everything you learn work in VI, V does not work in anywhere else, right? I mean, I I don't know. Maybe. I, I just don't don't use it. I'm telling you, don't do it. People use visual mode all the time, and I hate it. I, I laugh at them when they use it. I'm like, okay. I have never seen anybody use visual mode in any way that's more productive than an alternative that already exists in VI, ever. Uh, I, wait, I take that back. I've I've seen multi cursor Vim Frankenstein's monsters that you should never do. But I don't I I don't think you should do that. Yeah. Why would you? I just I'm stop. I'm not talking about that anymore. I'm going to make enemies. Okay, read file. If you, if you accidentally don't read a file, then you can read a file while you're running it. But that's really stupid. You should just exit and restart the file pointing the right thing. R will load the file up, right? You don't need this. If for some reason you start VI and you don't load a file, then you can do R the file. By the way, if you know Ed and X, you already learned R, right? We learned R last week. So you already know it. You don't have to talk about it. Uh... This, uh, yeah, this is this tutorial is horrible, but it's a good basis for something. The open command, okay, open is super important, so I'm glad we got here. Um, open adds a new line underneath where you currently are and puts you into insert mode. So you're going to use it all the time. I probably use open more than the I command because it's so important. All right, so you know, I I I did not know this, but there's actually a capital O. Which the only time to use a capital O is let's say you're on the first line in a file. Let's do that. So you're on the very first line in a file and you want to add a line to the top, right? How do you do that, Mr. Rob? Well, if you push O, whoops, if you push O, it's like right here, right? And then, I mean, it's really convoluted. You have to go O and then you'd have to like copy that down and then go up here and edit it, right? So the only time I've ever <laughs> used capital O is when I need to add something to the top of the file. So capital O inserts a line above where you currently are. And that's probably worth learning um, because there are reasons to do that. I mean, let's say you wanted to hear capital O, right? Uh, o is underneath, capital O is underneath. Um, yeah, so, so to me, that's uh, 
Yeah, that's worth looking for. I'm going to go through the file. Here we go. Open command. There we go. Move the cursor to the first line below marked. Okay, so that's we got that one. Um, the append command. We talked about this already. We talked about A and capital A. Uh, you already know about that. Uh, I almost never use append. There's really no need. There's no need because you can just use I, right? Why would you use a pen here? There's just no... One of the things with VI that I've found is that over the years, I've allowed myself to let the stuff I don't use kind of fade out of memory, and I use the super powerful commands all the time. So I have a very particular style of using VI that suits me well and that has lots much, much less to memorize, particularly using magic wands and uh, search centricity, right? So I just did that entire edit, did not use A at all, and I don't, it didn't even occur to me to use A. It's kind of a useless command, frankly. There's really no reason for it. Um, so uh, rectangular cursing for markdown tables. I don't do that. I just grab the whole paragraph usually. Uh, another way to replace capital R, that I don't, use that what does that even do this, no it's stupid don't do that no don't do this this is totally stupid move the cursor to the first line move the cursor to the beginning of the first x press r and type the number below in the second line so that it replaces x this totally stupid you know what you should do instead slash xxx enter and then change word cw and then change the next word. CW. I do CW all the time. CW all the time. Change word. That's stupid. Don't use that. I mean, you can, but whatever. Y. Okay, the only difference between Y and D is that Y yanks it and leaves it there. It's like a copy instead of cut. So D is cut and P and Y is, is yank or, or um, copy. Right? So and if you want to do a whole line, same thing. YYP. Right, you're gonna do this a lot. This also goes for paragraphs. So remember DAP, YAP, YAP. Okay, I'm gonna make a copy of that, make a copy of that, make a copy of that. So now I have like all these things, right? So again, you can YAP things, YAP, right? YAP, you can YAP things. Uh, you can, uh, if you wanna delete it though, DAP, right? YAP just creates a copy. Something to know though that it's not completely obvious to everybody is to some degree, you can be very careful about this, to some degree when you, Vim, if it's configured properly, VI doesn't do this, but Vim will. Vim will remember your paste buffer so that when you exit the file and go into another file, it's still there. But it's very dangerous to depend on that. And we're going to we're gonna teach you how to use Tmux buffers, which are way more reliable. Uh, and the Tmux buffers also properly get line returns and stuff like that. So we'll go, we'll go into that a little bit later. Um, uh, all right. So you can also, uh, edit words. Yeah. Yank a word. If you want, you just want one word. Fine. YW. I don't ever do that, but if you wanted to, you could do that. Uh, why? I mean, who does that? YW. I guess if it's a long one, I guess if you have like a big, long identifier, like we saw that like 80 character identifier in, in go yesterday, which is totally not go. Some bad person wrote it. It's a Kubernetes coder. Some junior engineer at Google. <laughs> it's horrible. It's like a 75 character name and go. But that might be one of the reasons you would do a YW. That's why I thought of it. Um, ignore. I don't even know what this is. Oh, ignore case. Who cares? That's probably. No, this is a settings. We'll talk about that when we do settings. You don't, you don't care about that. They, 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 you know what I don't like about this? They have all these like individual settings without talking about settings. It's not, it's, it's, it's cool. So O, capital A, append to the end of the line. O uh, and capital O, yes, use those a lot. E moves to the end of the word. I do use E for navig. I use E and A for navigation. So like if I, if I have, if I have no wrap on, for example, right? Because I have a really long line. It's like a, I don't know, uh, like a base 64 encoded line and it's all one line and I don't want it to take up all my space and I have wrapping off uh, and I want to go to the end of it and I don't want to spend it all the time, then then I'll use W. I'll use W right, instead of like the arrow keys. But you can always use the arrow keys or the H, J, K, and L stuff. And 
you know, in the old days, <laughs> the 90s, the 80s and 90s, I remember this, uh, spamming the navigation keys took forever. I mean, it took forever. You'd be like, and you're like, oh my God. You got to remember, that's why VI was made. It was made to not have to deal with, imagine having to do this. Imagine having to do this. So you might want to learn all those navigation commands better, right? But in 2023, the the refresh rates are so fast, you can just hold the there the the nav keys down and just go for it. It's like very lazy, but you really don't. And if you don't want to do that, if you don't, if that's not fast enough for you, you can use like W, you know, which is by word or something. Or if you want, you can even go by paragraph. Which is which is uh, just the, the curly in right so so but back in the old days some actually yeah yeah okay so anyway let's keep going getting help uh, you can use the help I suggest you know what you're doing before you do this I I very rarely use help here we're gonna talk about the help command a lot when we start doing uh, configuration so. Uh, you know, don't, don't mess with it right now. This is the reason I don't want you to mess with help because you're going to get into it and you're going to be like, how the hell do I get out? Uh, everybody does this. They open up help on accident. Like, I don't know what to do. And it tells you, it tells you right on the screen what to do. But you know, Vim has got this really complex way of like, it's actually got this kind of like hyperlinking. So you can go to, to a thing like, right. Like if you go on here, if you get onto the word and you can control D to navigate it, it's it's this entire internal like web browser -y kind of thing right and 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 it's you know it's it's worth learning but uh, if you get it mostly though if you get in here you need to get out you know how right how do you get out colon Q exclamation point and that will drop you out of that embedded session help session so you can move forward um, creating a startup script uh, we are going to, I didn't know you can use underscore for windows. I guess, I guess you can. I never do. We are going to do a VimRC file. We're going to do that next week. Next week, we're going to go through the entire VimRC file that I have. I'm going to, I'm going to summarize it very, 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 very quickly. And I'm going to justify why I have it that way. Uh, it's already something that you have. If you have the container, you don't need to download it. You don't need to set it up. But if you are a veteran and you know how to take care of your own VimRC file, or you want to copy that one and make your own out of it, uh, you'll understand that. It's going to take us almost the entire time. Uh, at least an hour to go through the VimRC file. Uh, we're going to have to learn a little bit of VimScript, just a minimum amount like everybody else. Nobody actually learns VimScript all the way through, I swear to God. They, they learn enough to be dangerous, and then when they need something, they go look at something that somebody else has done. Um, I'm not... We'll, we'll talk more about VimScript next week. So you can go ahead and write the file. 7.3 is the completion. Uh, command line completion with, with Control-D and Tab. Um, so... There, there is something that they don't tell you here uh, that I, I want you to see, right? This is also, we're going to talk about completion when we talk about, um, we're going to talk about code completion when we do the VimRC stuff. This does not really come into effect unless you're writing code. So I don't know why it's in the tutorial. I really don't. So if you're here and you want to say FMT dot write that, and, and it was a control D, is it no it's not D. It's uh well another one is control K. So control K, what it's not saved yet. I need to have something here. Print LN. Hello. Right? Save that. So control K actually I'm sorry, shift K. Shift K is super useful. You're gonna use it all the time. It's not in the tutorial. I don't know why they didn't cover it. Every single major programming language has support for capital K. Capital K will give you the documentation for the thing that you're, you've opened, right? I guess I have to have an actual project. So I, you have to be in a project, but uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find mine. Let me show you. I'm going to show you. This is a project I just made uh, yesterday, actually. Um, cube config is a cube CTL plugin that will give you kind of cool stuff. So, uh, it's okay. It does it cube cube config, cube conf, and it will give you some YAML data and you can pass that to JQ and you get these cool things and it'll show you where your file is and where the thing is coming from. A little bit of a plug for that cube, cube conf. 
equals so if you have like multiple cube configs uh you, if you want to this is I, I do this during my my co-working so 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 you can set different cube configs and then you can see um if you're like looking at the context for example um dot context you can see that some things come from one context and some things maybe come from the other context um looks like i deleted mine though already is it cube conk or cube oh, there we go no is that it cube i might have it wrong i'm spacing right now nope that is definitely not it it just must be cube conf uh yeah jq we're gonna learn jq is a way of dealing with javascript um we don't you don't know yet about about structured data that is something we're going to cover before we start covering programming or right around that same time the point of this is that i have some code here that i was working on and here it is in go and i wrote some documentation you see how the documentation is here right the documentation is written for this function and so this there's that function name i was telling you about so let's delete that word so dw there you go <laughs> I did not write that. That is somebody else's stupid name. Um, anyway, so if I was like writing some code that used that thing and I wanted to look it up, uh, search this word without the slash, I don't know about that. Anyway, if I want to read about that documentation for that, let's, you want to see how bad it is, by the way? Shift K, capital K, it will show you the documentation. Horrible documentation, right? Um, you can do that though you can on any of these things you can do shift k a lot of people don't know this so i'm showing this to you and to get out you just type enter um people are always telling me to use tab completion or something to your auto completion or ai or something to do coding and i'm like they, they and most of the people that tell me that don't know about shift k inside of vi so i'm telling you now you know as a beginner that's the actual documentation isn't that ugly <laughs> This is this is what Google engineers on the Kubernetes project, right? Yep. So I'm not going to complain. If you look at mine, though, look at how pretty my documentation is. See? Nice, pretty docs, right? So that doc pops up and shows you what it needs to do. Uh, another thing, too, is that, like if you want to just do a standard, like what does the return function do? Some of that stuff's not documented. So um, some of it is, some of it's not. JSON, JSON Marshall, there's a good one. So this is the documentation for the official JSON. The point is shift K for all of that. Anytime you want to get the docs on a thing from inside of the language, you can shift K to read the documentation if there is any, right? And sometimes that's good because you want to get this function signature. I would rather look at the function signature and as a description of the thing than to get some stupid tab completion that does not tell me anything about the function that is why i don't use tab completion because i can do i can do shift k which works on anything that has it support for it well, you know all the languages i can do this and rather than just getting this which is usually what people want right i can get the entire rundown of it and you don't get that when you just do tab completion so consider that when that, before you, you know, like jump on the, the the completion bandwagon that everybody wants to be on. I I don't like it. There's also Vim also has a thing that'll will actually update and as you type. It's, it's I cannot believe people do that. It would drive me insane. I would never do. It. Um, this is how to get between windows. Uh, Control W W to get to windows. You may on rare occasion you may need to do that. Most of the time you don't need that. That is an advanced topic. It shouldn't even be in this tutorial, frankly. So that is it. This concludes the really stupid Vim Tutor. Uh, uh, for further reading, study this book. Yeah, actually, the Vim Improved from Steve Will Nate. This is actually a really good book. This guy's written like tons and tons and tons of plugins uh, for Vim. And we'll talk about that next week. Um, uh, Learning the VI editor is old, but still really good. They really, the really great thing about Vim is it's one of those things that you can get a book on that it actually really, really helps you. And I already told you about uh, the resources on rdbx.gg, which I will put into the other, um, into the into the other spot I'll, today. Sometime I'll move them over, but I just had not gone over that yet. I hadn't moved it over. So the 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 among these, the one that I personally like the most, Open Vim is pretty good. Assuming I can get my DM. My, this is I have a network problem. So I, did they here's here's open vim. This openvim.com introduction is pretty good if you want to do it. It's very vim like. It's a br browser based vim is just kind of an oxymoron to me. Um, but this one, if you just want kind of a 
what? Why haven't they? Why haven't they turned on their? Oh my god, they haven't. They haven't. This is self signed cert. That's like stupid. Anyway, um, this Vim Genius thing is pretty good. Uh, it's you know, it's if you want kind of research, but I, again, start writing stuff. Next week we're going to start writing our editing our configuration files, so you'll have a lot of reasons to use Vim. And remember the survival technique up front, and. And that's that's good. Move the cursor left. Okay, I'm gonna let's see. H, good. Uh, enter. Move the cursor right. L. Next. Okay. Save changes and close the file. Colon. I actually I actually petitioned to have them add colon X here because they didn't have it, <laughs> and they added it. They added it. I wrote into them. Move the cursor down. J. Uh, delete character. Add the cursor X. If you want a good review, this is kind of fun. Uh, close the file. Uh, I mean, there's lots of them, right? There's lots of them for that. Why is it doing that again? How about ZZ? No. Close the file. Next. Move the cursor up. Up. Next. Exit insert mode. Control F bracket. They added that one for me, too. Yeah, there. I went. I was going through this with my group at Skillstack, and I had him. I wrote to the author, and it was very nice, by the way. The author is really, really nice. And they added Control F bracket, and they added, um, they added colon X, and a bunch of other things that weren't there. So it's it's kind of fun. Um, I mean, it's a good review. Exit insert mode. Escape. Press Enter. Append at the end of a line. Append at end of line. Capital A. Exit insert mode, escape this time. Yes, escape or control of bracket. And it makes me so happy to see that they added control of bracket. Anyway, that's something you can go play with. Um, and I think we're done with today for the thing. So, YouTube, go get your Vim on, uh, learn it, and get ready to have fun. We're going to be learning a lot more as we go. Um, we're going to talk about Vim for another week, and then, uh, and then after that, I think that the, after that, then we're going to learn Tmux after that. And, and then we have Tmux plus Vim. Oh my God, the power. The power of Tmux plus Vim. It's just so good. It's so good. So we'll learn, we'll learn Tmux after that. And then we're going to start writing a ton of code. We're going to write bash code. And we're going to start, you know, having fun from the command line and all of that jazz. But spend the entire week getting good with them and practice writing in there. And we'll talk to you next week in the next boost. And I know we went over today. I think we went over a full by a full hour today, but I really didn't want to break up uh, the Vim stuff. Uh, so <laughs> I hope you approve of this longer because the Vim stuff, you know, that is kind of like something you got to cover in one, in one go. Uh, the Vim and VS code is a waste because you can't use the magic wand commands. Um, and yeah, you're welcome. Everybody, all the thank yous in there. Appreciate you guys saying that. All right. That's it. Bye.